Chapter 2. My name is Barry Allen and I'm one of the fastest men alive. When I was a child, I saw my mother get killed by something impossible. My father went to prison for her murder. Then an accident made me the impossible. To the outside world, I'm an ordinary forensic scientist, but secretly I used my speed to fight crime and find other people like me. And one day, I'll find who killed my mother and get justice for my father. I am, the Flash. Before the particle accelerator explosion, I had a very set belief of principles on how the world works. Rules like gravity kept people on the ground, the sun heated the planet and theoretical elements were theoretical. After my parents' death, I gave up on my path in science but after the particle accelerator explosion, my body changed in ways that I never imagined. It restarted my life and now I know what to do. I will use my speed to help Barry and everyone keep this city safe and make my parents proud. Meet Central City's newest speedster, Impulse. The Crimson Speedster. Things are getting even weirder. Central City was calm today, as nothing was going on. It was normal, people went to work, kids were in school and everyone enjoyed their day. For Barry Allen, today was his day off from work. So, what was he doing? He was hanging out with his friends at Star Labs. Cisco, Caitlin, Drive, Wells, and Naruto who had now become a part of the team. Cisco even had a mannequin set up next to Barry's suit so Naruto could keep his impulse suit there. Both suits were on display and Cisco even made some new goggles for Naruto to wear in the field. They were designed to handle Naruto's moving at extreme speed, and had some other little goodies like night vision, thermal vision and even an enhanced scope. Plus, he made them larger so they covered up more of his face and he added the lightning bolt headsets to Naruto's suit. Even though it was Barry's day off, drive, Wells wanted to keep Barry busy and train him some more in his powers, specifically his ability to multitask which took the form of him playing ping-pong with Cisco, operation with Caitlin and chess with Dr. Wells, all at the same time. Caitlin tried to get a piece from the game but the buzzer went off. This game isn't even remotely anatomically correct. Caitlin said in anger as Barry zoomed over and got his piece. That's not the point, drive. Snow. Barry said as he then was playing ping-pong with Cisco. Then what is the point? Caitlin asked to have fun, Barry said, and to continue your ongoing training. We're testing the speed of your mind by pushing your ability to multitask. Dr. Wells said as he made his move on the chessboard and Barry zoomed over, moved a pawn, then zoomed back to ping pong to score on Cisco and then zoomed back to hit his timer. I'm waiting on you, drive, Wells, Barry said with a smile as he went back to playing ping pong. How come Barry gets all the fun while I'm stuck here at a desk doing homework? Naruto said as everyone looked at him. To his word, he was at a little desk, sitting in a chair with piles of textbooks and notebooks, working on homework. If you're going to want to make your parents proud and help save this city, first things first is to finish your college education. Dr. Wells said. I did finish, okay. I was about to graduate before I, comma, I decided to leave. They should have just given me my degree but no. Sorry Naruto, we're sorry for what happened but you did miss some work when you left. Please, I was top of my class. Naruto said as he grumbled and finished the last of his advanced theoretical physics homework. So, this should be no problem for you. Caitlin said as she got buzzed again and then Barry zoomed by and took his turn. Besides, it's not that bad. You know how many people would love to go back to college. Barry said as he and Cisco kept playing. Really, you want to have to deal with school, teachers and homework. I was finished with school. Now I have to finish another semester before they'll give me my degree. Good thing I still qualified for scholarship. Money grabbing idiots. Naruto mumbled as he started his last section of homework. He had to write a 10-page paper for his advanced literature class. What are you complaining about? You know how quickly you'll finish all your work with your new powers. Cisco said. Not that you should cheat. Caitlin added. Is it cheating if you use a calculator to help with your math homework? Cisco stated. No matter how fast I'm able to finish my homework, 
Cop 2 minutes cop, I'll still be in classes until December. This sucks. Naruto said. It'll be over before you notice it, Naruto. Trust me. Dr. Wells said. I don't know, drive. Wells. I notice a lot faster than before. Naruto added as he quickly finished his paper. There. Done. Did you remember to double check your work? Caitlin added. What are you, my mother? Naruto asked. Naruto. Caitlin said in a commanding tone as Naruto mumbled. No. Naruto said with his head down, like a child would when they're scolded by their mother. Sisko and Barry chuckled as they saw how Caitlin mothered Naruto since he was the youngest out of all of them. But only by a few years. Caitlin and Sisko were 26, Barry was 25 while Naruto was 22. He was the baby of the pack. Now you just made your homework time go even longer. Caitlin said as she got buzzed again. Demon Ice Queen. Naruto whispered. What? Caitlin asked. Nothing. Naruto replied. Checkmate. Doctor. Wells said as Barry zoomed over to see how he lost. Wait. Checkmate. Barry asked. I guess you still have a few things left to learn, don't we, Mr. Allen? Doctor. Well asked as their computer went off. Armed robbery at 4th and Collins. Sisko said. Finally, some action. Naruto said as he got up. No, you stay and finish your homework. Barry go. Caitlin said as Barry grabbed his suit and left. Ah oh man. Naruto said. Back to work, Naruto. Caitlin said as Naruto grumbled and got back to his homework. Geez, remind me never to get on Caitlin's bad side. Sisko whispered to Dr. Wells. Likewise. Dr. Wells replied as Naruto kept working. Barry zoomed to 4th and Collins where he saw the group of four robbers that stopped the armored truck with a tow truck. Barry quickly zoomed by and knocked down the robber getting out of the tow truck, he then punched one of the robbers holding one of the guards at gunpoint. He zoomed around at super speed and then hit the other robber who was guarding the hostage and then he jumped onto the armored truck and knocked the guy who was trying to steal whatever was in the armored truck to the ground. The guy who tried to steal what was in the armored truck took off his mask as he saw the streak run by. Then one of the armed robbers shot one of the guards trying to run away. He shot him in the back and got on his bike and left. The streak zoomed back and went to check on the guard. He saw the bullet had hit the guard's shoulder and he was in pain. Where's the nearest hospital? Barry asked in his calm. Street. Andrews. Seven blocks north. Two east. Caitlin replied. Call the ur, and tell them they have an incoming GSW. Barry said as he picked up the guard and took him to the hospital while the robbers left. Line break xxxxxx. After Barry saved the guard, he went back to his day job. After Caitlin stopped hounding him about his homework, Naruto left for the shelter. He super sped into his room and put all his books on his desk. He was about to go to the kitchen to make a snack when he stepped on something. He looked down to see an old instant ramen cup. Eww. Naruto said as he looked around and his room was a bit of a mess. Food wrappers and empty food containers around, clothes everywhere and the bed was a mess. A. Hey, why not do some cleaning? Naruto said as he super sped around the room and in five seconds his room was spotless and organized. Hum. I don't get why people complain so much. Probably because cleaning requires a lot more time than that. Naruto heard as he turned to see Tsunade and Shizune. But it's really cool. Shizune said as Naruto chuckled. What? Everything with my new powers is a lot easier. Naruto said as he then super sped to the kitchen to get a snack. He came back into the room with a bag of potato chips. He ate some chips when Tsunade ripped the bag from his hands. Good. We were worried about you. Tsunade said. No need to worry. Doctor. Wells is looking after me in case there's anything wrong but I'm fine. Naruto said. Good. And I'm glad he convinced you to finish school. Did you finish your homework? Shizun asked. Yes. And before you nag me, Caitlin already filled my nagging quota for the day. Naruto said as Tsunade chuckled. Good. Now since you finished your homework, you can go help the kids with their homework. Tsunade said. Okay. I can do that. Naruto said as he walked to the door. I'm not done. There are other things we need you to do. 
Tsunade said as she handed Naruto a roll of paper. Naruto took it and unrolled it to reveal at least a six-foot-long list of chores for him to do. Given your new speed, this housework will take you a few hours while it would take us days. Ah, uh, that's a lot of work. Naruto said as he saw Tsunade wanted him to clean the kitchen, all the bathrooms, mop the floors, paint the shed in the backyard, go food shopping, prepare dinner for the kids, go to the post office to deliver and pick up mail, fix the leaky faucet, fill up the water softener, do the laundry, check the engine on the car and clean out the garage. And that was just the stuff within the first foot of the list. It's no problem for a big hero like you. I mean, you save people so doing house chores should be easy for you. Are we going to have a problem? Tsunade asked with a nice face as she cracked her knuckles. No, uh, well I got work to do. Naruto said as he super sped away. Ah, I love that kid. His new powers make my life so much easier. Tsunade said as Shizun chuckled. Do you think it would be too much to ask him to stop by New York for pizza? Shizun asked as Tsunade chuckled. While Naruto was busy, on the other side of the city the crew that was responsible for the attempted armored car heist were in their hideout, going over the blur that managed to stop them. There's been some rumors going around. About some blur going through the city. I heard that there may be more than one of them. One of the robbers said. What the hell is it, man? Another asked. Maybe it was a drone. Some kind of secret army thing. Another said as the leader, Leonard Snart looked at his laptop that had a still image taken from the street cameras. It showed the blur was a man. When I was a kid, my grandfather used to take my sister and me to this diner, the motor car. Food was for crap but the view was great. Right across from the central city precinct. I still go there, I still listen to their radios, and I learn their response times. There are 40 banks in central city, each of them within 60 seconds of police response. That's the advantage of hitting a moving target. Once the armored car called 911, we had 182 seconds before any cop could be on the scene. No one could have been there fast enough to stop us. But something did. And you lost your cool. Snart said to the guy who shot the guard. You know the rules. We don't shoot guards or cops, unless it's the only option. We don't need the heat. Snart said. The heat? What the hell do you think the blur is, Snart? Right. Screw this. Screw you. I'm out. The guy said as he was shot in the head by Snart. Well, if you're out, you're out. Snart said. This blur, and his friend, are men. We're gonna have to up our game. Line break xxxxxx. Back with Barry, he went to the CCPD only to see that an old friend had stopped by for a visit. Felicity Smoke, he met her when he went tracking an unexplained case in Starling City where he found out that she worked for the Arrow. She was in town to check out how he was doing and so Barry decided to take her to Star Labs and show her how his team did things. They walked into Star Labs and into the main computer room where Cisco and Caitlin were working on some things. And this is where my team monitors the police bands for criminal activity, like anything that happens in the city. Check this out, we've got our own satellite. Barry said. I know, I've hacked into it from time to time. Felicity said. Rude. Cisco said as he and Caitlin saw Felicity. But, it is so great to see you again, Felicity. I'm just wondering how much of our operation she needs to see. Caitlin said. Don't worry, I'm good with secrets. Felicity said as a whoosh of air entered the lab and they saw Naruto in his impulse costume holding a lot of takeout and Kurama in the other arm. Kurama jumped out of his arms and jumped onto a chair and licked his fur. Naruto had his back to them as he put the takeout on a table and took his goggles off. Sorry, I'm late. Stopped a mugging before I got back. But don't worry I got your food. Cisco, I got your double bacon belly buster with fries and a soda. Caitlin, your normal belly buster with fries and a diet soda. I got drive, Wells his deluxe belly burger with fries and shake, and Barry and I several belly burgers. Naruto said as he turned around and saw everyone looking at him with a new girl. Huh, that's new, Felicity said. Uh, Naruto said as he quickly put his mask on. Who are you? It's okay, Naruto. She's a friend. 
Felicity Smoke, meet Naruto Namikaze, our newest speedster. Barry said. Wow, another speedster. Hi, Felicity said as she shook his hand. Nice to meet you. How does she know you guys? Naruto asked as he began to take off his suit to wear the normal clothes he had underneath. She's an old friend. She visited Barry when he was in his coma. Sisko said. Ah, but aren't you guys kind of worried about her seeing all this? Naruto asked. It's okay, I'm really good at keeping secrets. Felicity said. Yeah, Felicity works with the arrow. Barry said. Sweet, Sisko and Naruto said as they high-fived. And you apparently are not good at keeping secrets. Felicity told Barry as Barry realized his mistake. This all makes sense, you know who the arrow is. Sisko said. Wait, Barry do you know who the arrow is? Naruto asked as he, Caitlin and Sisko were curious. Uh, Barry said as he shook his head no. Let's just say that my team has a similar setup, but with more pointy objects. Felicity said. Yep. They heard as Kurama walked over and nuzzled his leg against Felicity's leg. Oh, who's the cutie? Felicity asked. My pet, Fox, Kurama. He was kind of bored at home so I brought him here. Maybe he could be our team's mascot. Naruto joked as Caitlin picked him up and she and Felicity were gushing over him. He walks on four legs and is furry but he gets all the attention from the ladies. Sisko said as Naruto and Barry chuckled. Welcome Ms. Smoke. They heard as they saw Dr. Wells enter. Dr. Well, the Dr. Wells. Felicity said. Please, call me Harrison, Felicity. Dr. Wells said. You know who I am? Felicity asked. Ranked second at the National Informative Technology Competition at age 19. Graduated MIT with a master's degree in cybersecurity and computer sciences. I know who you are. I keep an eye out for promising talent in scientific fields. That's what brought me Cisco and Caitlin. And I foresaw, great things from you. Dr. Wells said. Speaking of great things, wanna see something cool? Barry asked as Felicity nodded. Come on. Barry said as they moved to the room with Cisco's treadmill and Barry showed Felicity his speed in action. Dr. Wells, Naruto, Kurama, Felicity, Caitlin and Sisko were in the observation room while Barry ran on the treadmill at super speed, averaging around about 380 miles per hour. How fast can he run? Felicity asked. Barry and Naruto haven't reached their top speeds, theoretically speaking. Dr. Wells said. I think when we fought the mist we maxed out at about 370 miles per hour, give or take. Naruto said. The mist? Felicity asked. Metahuman psycho criminal who kills his victims by turning into poison mist. Sisko said. Oh. Felicity replied. The weirdest things we've faced would be super strengths Mirakuru soldiers and deathstroke. Cool. Naruto said as they all looked at him. I mean, not cool. Let's go back to watching Barry. So, is he really okay? Felicity asked. His heart rate and vitals are in normal range for him. Caitlin said. No, I mean, the lightning bolt changed him. Do any of you really know how much? Felicity asked. We know, a fair amount. Sisko said. If everything about him is sped up, is he gonna age faster? What would happen if he ran too fast? Would he just be running and then poof, he's dust in a red costume? Felicity asked, concerned about Barry. Everything we do here at Star Labs, is to protect Barry Allen. Trust us, Felicity, he is in very good hands here. Dr. Wells said. Me too. Barry's not the only speedster. Don't want to be left out. Naruto said as they chuckled. Wanna see how fast I can run backwards? Barry shouted as they saw him run backwards but after two seconds he flew off the treadmill and hit the wall. Ow, Naruto said as Felicity looked concerned. Don't worry, they heal fast too. Caitlin said. While Barry and the group were with Felicity at Star Labs, Joe was with Eddie at the Central City Museum staking out the museum for Leonard Snart. They sat in their squad car across the street from the museum, looking for anything suspicious. Ah, I don't get it. Why would Snart come here? Eddie asked. Snart's been deterred before but once he goes after something, 
He doesn't stop till he gets it, ever. Joe said as he looked around and Eddie readied himself to speak. Joe, I want you to know that I'm really serious about Iris. She's an amazing woman and I can really see myself. Did I ever tell you about that wild night I had my last day of college? Joe said, interrupting Eddie. I don't think so, no. Eddie replied, not even after we've kicked back a few beers after work. Joe asked, we've never done that. Eddie said, oh right, those are things I do with my friends. And since we've never done those things, we ain't friends. So, there's absolutely no reason I need to hear about your dating life. Joe said, I just don't want my personal relationship with your daughter to affect our working relationship. Eddie said, it ain't about you Eddie. It's about her. So as long as you don't talk about you and her, we will be cool. Joe said as he went back to watching over the museum. Maybe we should just listen to the radio. Eddie said as he turned the radio on to get rid of the awkward silence. He turned it on and station played Percy Sledge's When a Man Loves a Woman. He changed it to the next station and Marvin Gaye's Let's Get It On started to play, which made the situation even more awkward so Eddie shut the radio off. Quiet is good. While Joe and Eddie were busy trying to find Snart, unaware that he managed to acquire something that would give him a leg up on the police and the speedsters, Barry was with Felicity showing her the sights. While they were doing that, Naruto went back to the shelter to finish all the chores on that list which took him about an hour. Naruto needed to finish those chores of Tsunade would kill him. After that, Naruto wanted to do some training. Naruto sped back to Star Labs to put on his boots and do some speed training. He sat on the treadmill and strapped on his boots when Kurama came walking in. Hey, buddy, I'm going to need you to watch the monitors and shut the treadmill down should something happen. Naruto said as he picked up Kurama and walked into the control room. He put him down on a chair and turned on the monitors. Now all you have to do, is hit that red button if I say so. And don't even think of messing me up, I know you're thinking about it. Naruto said as he missed Kurama smirk. Naruto walked back to the treadmill and turned it on. He then started off at a slow pace of about 100 miles and then kicked it up to 300 miles per hour. Naruto kept running and running as fast as he could as the speedometer would now flicker between 380 miles per hour. Come on, come on, Naruto said to himself as he kept pushing himself to try and find his fastest he could go. As Naruto was training, drive, Wells wheeled into the control booth to see Kurama sitting on one of the chairs. He pets the fox on the head and looked at Naruto training himself, running as fast as he could push his body. The speedometer clocked his current speed at about 400 miles per hour. It seems some things never changed. He's as determined as ever, like he always has been. Wells said as he took off his glasses and looked at Naruto training. As Naruto was running, Wells smiled as he saw the flashes and sparks of white and crimson lightning that seemed to generate at a faster pace and spark around Naruto's body faster as he concentrated on his speed. Faster. Faster, Wells whispered as he saw Naruto was accessing his powers very well. Guys, Naruto heard as he slowed down and stopped to see Caitlin walk in. Bank robbery at the Central City National Branch. Caitlin said. I'm on it, Naruto said as he super sped to his suit and left to the bank. The bank robbers were currently emptying the cash registers and holding the main executive at gunpoint as he opened the large safe in the back. The group of seven robbers all had assault rifles and masks to cover their faces with large bags slung over their shoulders. Three were on crowd control, three were emptying the cash in the teller cash registers and the leader was holding his gun to the executive's head as he used his key to open the vault door. Guys, cops here in two minutes. One of the robbers holding the crowd hostage shouted as he looked at his watch. You know the drill. The leader said as one of the robbers at crowd control walked over to the door. He opened his bag and took out some C4 charges and began arming them. Then suddenly a whoosh of air entered the bank as he was knocked out and hit against the wall. The robbers turned to see what happened and saw their buddy get knocked out but then the three robbers by the tellers were all dragged away, their guns taken and tied together using one of the aisle red ropes in the bank. 
Then the two robbers in crowd control were knocked out and sat on the bank's couches, their guns taken and hands zip cuffed. The leader was about to shoot the executive and pulled the trigger but the executive was gone and his bullet hit the safe. The leader was then knocked against the safe, his gun taken and his hands tied to the safe. The hostages in the bank all saw this happen in a flash and whoosh of air and then saw a man in a white and orange suit wearing goggles slid to a stop. Ha! That was easy. Impulse said. Wait, they had bombs. One of the hostages shouted as Naruto saw them and the bombs had been turned on. The robber must have turned them on but wasn't able to set a long enough timer and they were ticking down at 30 seconds. Crap, Impulse said as he ran forward grabbed the bombs, ran outside the bank and threw them as high as he could into the air. The bombs exploded as bystanders shouted in fright and hit the ground as the large explosion caused a large boom but the buildings and people were safe. The cops arrived on the scene, seeing the explosion in the air and the guy in the suit. They stopped outside the bank and took out their weapons as the people in the streets began taking out their phones and began recording everything that was happening. Impulse ran into the bank and began sitting the robbers and their guns outside the bank for the police. The cops saw what happened in a blur of orange and white lighting as the white and orange blur zoomed in and out of the bank three times and the robbers were all placed next to each other, sitting on the ground with Impulse right beside him. They're all set for you and the hostages are okay. Catch you later. Impulse shouted as he super sped away as the cops began to arrest the robbers and the bystanders hit social media with the videos and images of the speedster. Naruto arrived back in Star Labs as Cisco, Caitlin and Dr. Wells were at the computers. Seven robbers are on their way to jail. Naruto shouted as he walked in. Man, that was fun. Nicely done, Naruto. Dr. Wells said. Yeah, taking out those robbers and those bombs. Awesome, Cisco said. But I'm not so sure about standing for a photo shoot. Caitlin said as she pulled up some blurred images of him at the bank. They were blurry because Naruto was so fast that they couldn't get a clear image except for a basic outline, color scheme and the lightning trail. I have to agree with Caitlin. Remaining unseen is always the best scenario with your powers. Dr. Wells said. Relax, guys no one saw me. The goggles covered my face and the images are too blurry to clear up. No one will uncover who I am. Naruto said. Yeah, he was moving too fast. I clocked the speed you went, today was the fastest you went. 410 miles per hour. Cisco said. Excellent work, Dr. Wells said with a smile. If I went that fast and the blurry picture is the best they could get, I don't feel worried about being uncovered. Naruto said with a smile. His phone then went off as he saw it was a text from Shizun to run an errand for food. They wanted pizza, from New York. Uh, just out of curiosity, how far is it from here to New York and how long would it take to get there? Line break xxxxxx. The next day, Naruto was back at Hudson University going to his classes. He had his advanced theoretical physics class, taught by none other than Professor Martin Stein, one of the most prominent and brilliant minds of the world and someone that Naruto admired like Dr. Wells. Naruto had taken several of Martin Stein's classes during his years at Hudson University and whenever Naruto talked with the professor, he felt that the professor was impressed with his intellect, at least he hoped. If Naruto had stayed on for his senior year, he would have requested to be one of Martin Stein's lab assistants but fate had another plan. Naruto sat down in class with the one other student who had qualified and was smart enough for Professor Stein's class. He sat down in his seat and opened Stein's book to the chapter on theoretical applications of nuclear energy when another one of the theoretical physics teachers walked into class. Hello, students. Could you please open your book to page 134? The professor said. Excuse me, where's Professor Stein? Naruto asked. Professor Stein, is unfortunately missing. During the incident 10 months ago, and we haven't heard from him since. The professor said as he began writing down notes on the board, leaving Naruto to wonder if Professor Stein was just missing or if he was dead. The class continued with the professor just following the book and lesson plan that Professor Stein had set up but Naruto felt the professor was less knowledgeable than Professor Stein. 
Naruto went to the dining hall after his class and stuffed himself at the pizza bar while also working on his dissertation on the theoretical application of hyperactive atomic hydrogen particles for energy use. It was based on one of his dad's old theoretical papers that Naruto wanted to pursue. Naruto was close to working on the theory that if a stable hydrogen particle isotope was created in the right conditions, it could provide renewable and sustainable energy. It could help solve the world's energy crisis if it proved correct and he could push it far enough. Naruto kept working when he felt his phone buzz. He pulled it out and saw it was Barry. Hey Barry. Naruto said. Naruto, we got a sighting of Snart. He's at the museum. Barry said as Naruto nodded. I'm on my way. Naruto said as he quickly put his books and laptop away. He then ran behind a building, made sure he wasn't seen and then super sped to Star Labs to get his suit and then to the museum. Naruto had changed as he was running to the museum to help Barry stop Snart. He zoomed through the streets to see the road in front of a theater covered in ice and Joe run in. He ran into the theater and stopped to see the flash save Joe but get hit by Snart's gun which fired some kind of ice blast. Snart smiled seeing that he hit the mysterious blur that stopped him before but then looked at the entrance doors and saw some guy dressed in a suit. Naruto turned to Snart and saw Snart aim his gun at civilians so he quickly ran and got those civilians out of the way. Snart fired his gun and saw a blur save the civilians as the freeze blast froze part of a wall. Snart looked behind him to see the man in the suit put the civilians near the emergency exit. Quickly, go! Impulse shouted as they ran. Impulse then turned to run at Snart but was shocked to see a freeze blast right in front of him and hit him in the leg. Arg! Impulse groaned as the impact of the freeze blast threw him off his feet and onto the ground. Snart fired another blast as the flash super sped to Impulse, saved him, and put him next to Joe. You okay? Joe asked as he helped Naruto sit down. My leg. I can't feel it. Naruto said as he and Joe saw that his right leg had been covered in a sheet of ice from the knee down. Time for a test run. Let's see how fast you are. They heard Snart shout as he began firing his freeze gun at civilians but the flash super sped around the theater and got them to safety. Come on. Joe said as he grabbed Naruto's arm hoisted him up and helped him to one of the emergency exits while Barry saved the civilians. Barry ran and saved several groups of civilians from being hit but he was running a lot slower and getting more tired after being hit by that freeze blast. Snart then fired a freeze blast at one of the security guards in the theater as Barry ran to save him. He was running as fast as he could, right alongside the freeze blast but wasn't fast enough to stop it. The freeze blast hit the security guard and killed him. No. Barry shouted as he saw the effects of Snart's gun. The guard was killed, with his body black like severe frostbite. Barry was blaming himself for not going fast enough and letting someone die which gave Snart the opportunity to escape. The police soon arrived so Barry ran out and helped Naruto back to Star Labs. Felicity, drive. Wells, Caitlin, and Sisko saw Barry super speed back into the lab helping Naruto who had his leg semi-frozen. Caitlin, help, Barry said as she helped take Naruto. I got him, Caitlin said as she helped Naruto onto a chair. Arg, Naruto groaned as he felt like his right leg had gone numb and was feeling severe frostbite. Are you okay, doctor? Wells asked as he wheeled over and Naruto took off his mask. Peachy. Just a little numb. Naruto groaned as Sisko and Felicity brought over a space heater to help melt the ice off of Naruto's leg while Caitlin turned on the scanners. You should look at Barry too. He got hit, too. Not as bad as you. Barry said as Felicity helped him out of his suit. Arg. Barry groaned as he grabbed his side. But still bad. Come on. Felicity said as she helped him onto a gurney. Barry sat down as Caitlin turned on the scanners to check Barry's and Naruto's injuries. Barry lifted his shirt and everyone saw the bad injury, which looked a really bad case of frostbite. Wow, that doesn't look so good. Felicity said as Caitlin brought over a warm towel to help. Here, this should help. Caitlin said as she dabbed the injury, causing Barry to groan and grunt. Thanks. Barry said as Caitlin nodded. Naruto, how you doing? Not bad, Naruto said as he groaned in discomfort. 
His leg had defrosted and the ice was gone but it felt extremely numb and tender. Naruto removed his shoe and rolled up his pants to see that his leg was just like Barry's frostbite wound. Geez. That doesn't look so good. Felicity said as she brought over another warm towel. Well, I'm still getting some feelings in my leg and feet. That's a good sign, Naruto said. We're just glad you're okay. Doctor, Wells said as Naruto smiled. What happened? Joe had called in a police emergency. Snart was at the museum. We tried to stop him. He opened fire. Barry said. Saved some civilians but we got hit. With what? I have no idea. Naruto said. Yeah, I've never seen anything like this except from a really bad case of frostbite. Felicity said as she used her tablet to pull up some information on Snart. Well, that's what it's presenting itself to look like. Caitlin said as the scans she had done brought up images of Barry's and Naruto's blood vessels that were ink as in ice. It's presenting itself like third-degree frostbite. I thought they had hyperhealing. Felicity said. It's been slowed. If your cells weren't regenerating at the rate they are your blood vessels would have been frozen solid, and the nerve damage would have been permanent. You're both lucky to be alive. Caitlin said. Snart wasn't another metahuman. He had some kind of gun. It shot this blast and froze things. It slowed me down. Enough that I wasn't in time to save someone. Barry said. According to his records, Snart didn't even bother to finish high school. So how did he build a handheld high-tech snow machine? Felicity asked. Star Labs built the cold gun. Doctor. Wells said as Naruto and Barry looked at him. Doctor. Wells and Caitlin had nothing to do with this. I built the gun. Sisko said as Naruto and Barry looked at him. Why? Barry asked. Because speed and cold are opposites. Temperature is measured by how quickly the atoms of something are oscillating. The faster they are, the hotter it is. When things are cold, they're slower on the atomic level. When there's no movement, it's called, absolute zero. Naruto said, finishing Sisko's sentence. Yeah, I designed a compact cryo engine to achieve absolute zero. I built it to stop you too. Sisko said as Naruto and Barry looked at him. I didn't know who you guys were then. I mean, you guys could have been psychos like Martin or Nimbus. Or what if Naruto was in fact the man in yellow? But I wasn't, Naruto said. I know that now, Sisko said. We built the entire structure you guys are standing in to do good, and it blew up. In the wake of that, you can understand why Sisko would want to be prepared for the worse. Caitlin said. I can understand that, but what I can't understand is why you didn't tell me or Naruto what you did. I mean, after all we've been through I thought you trusted me. I thought we were friends. Barry said. We are, Barry. Sisko replied. If you had just told me I could have been prepared. But instead someone died tonight. Barry said. And I have to live with that? Sisko asked. No, Sisko. We all do. Barry said as he left. Line break xxxxx. After a few hours of resting and getting checked out by Caitlin, Naruto got back the feeling in his leg and his frostbite was healing nicely. Naruto decided to stick around and rest a bit more before heading back to the shelter. He was sitting down in a chair, drinking some soda as he looked at his impulse suit. Something on your mind, Naruto. Naruto heard as he turned to see Drive. Wells and Sisko enter the room. No, Drive, Wells. Just thinking, Naruto said. Oh, about what, Doctor? Wells asked. Just about recent events. Naruto said as he exhaled and turned in his chair. Sisko, look, I get why you made the gun and I'm not mad. You're not, Sisko asked. No, still a bit cold but Caitlin said that's normal so I'm fine. Naruto joked as doctor. Wells chuckled. If I was in your position, I probably would have done the same thing. Yeah, well I still should have told you guys about the guns. Sisko said as Naruto nodded. The important thing is that you and Barry are safe and Sisko won't do something like this again. Doctor, Wells said. Yes, drive, Wells, Sisko said. Still, managing to create a gun that can fire ice at absolute zero is so cool. I would have loved to have helped you build it. Naruto said as Sisko chuckled. Yeah it was. 
and made homemade ice cream almost instantly. Though the brain freeze sucked. Sisko joked as Naruto chuckled. Yeah, still I would have loved to see the specs on that thing. The engine control unit on that to equalize the temperature and output must have, Naruto said as he stopped to think. What is it, Dr. Wells asked. Sisko, the engine control unit on the gun, its job is to regulate the air-to-fuel ratio output to prevent the gun's fluid from overflowing, right? Naruto asked. Yeah, Sisko replied. Doesn't an AQ need regular updates to keep functioning and maintain efficiency? Naruto asked as Sisko and Dr. Wills knew he was right. If that AQ is receiving wireless updates from Star Labs, then, we can track it. Dr. Wells said as Naruto and Sisko got to work and Dr. Wells called everybody to the room. What's going on? Barry asked. We think we found a way to track Captain Cold. Sisko said. You've got to stop naming these guys. Caitlin said. Barry. Naruto said as Barry looked at him and exhaled. How? Barry asked. It was actually Naruto that got the idea. You see, the gun has an engine control unit to help regulate the air-to-fuel ratio and to prevent the gun's sub-cold fluid from overflowing and exploding. Sisko said. Okay. Barry said. The AQ will receive regular wireless updates from Star Labs to maintain efficiency. If we can boost the city using Central City's network, and send a false update, we can track Snart. Naruto said as Dr. Wells smiled. How long would that take? Barry asked. Working as fast as we can to hack into the CCN, maybe 20 minutes. Naruto said. I can do it in less than one. When it comes to hacking, I'm the fastest woman alive. Felicity said as she sat down at a desk with her laptop. She then cracked her figure but groaned. Ow, that was not as badass as I pictured. Felicity got to work hacking into the city's network and like she said it looked less than a minute. All right, I'm in. Felicity said. Nice. Naruto said. All right, I'm sending the updates. Sisko said. We're connected. The network is now triangulating the location. Naruto said as the computer took a second. Got it. He's heading north on Leyden towards the train station. If he's leaving, it would appear that Mr. Snart may have gotten what he came for. Dr. Wells said as Barry quickly suited up. See, Barry, when we work together there is nothing we can't do. Sisko said as he saw Barry turn on his earpiece. Whoa, dude how are we supposed to talk? I don't feel like talking right now. Barry said as he left. Naruto then ran over to his suit. Naruto. Naruto turned to Dr. Wells. Be careful. Always. Naruto said as he suited up and sped after Barry. They sped to the train station and passed a police car parked out front. They ran onto the platforms and saw a leaving train with Joe and Eddie stuck at the platform, the train that Snart got on so Naruto and Barry sped past them and after the train. Snart was on the train and walking through one of the train cars when Barry smashed through the window and cut him off. Snart pointed his gun at Barry but then he heard another crash and saw another man behind him. There's nowhere to run. The Flash said. I knew there was two of you. I didn't see you properly before. Your moms know you are out past your bedtimes. Snart asked. Give it up, Snart. You can't escape. Impulse said. If you wanted to get away, you should have taken something faster than a train. Flash said. That's if I wanted to get away. I've seen your weakness, at the armored car, then at the theater. See, while you're busy saving everybody, I'll be busy saving myself. Snart said as he fired his gun at the floor, which seeped through and froze the train wheels causing the train to rock and swerve. Naruto and Barry held on as the passengers screamed in terror and Snart just chuckled. He went to the door and popped it open. Good luck with that, Snart shouted as he jumped. The train kept rocking and moving and soon all the train carts were off the tracks and began to flip around. Naruto and Barry held onto the railings as they saw the train cart start to flip on its side but to them it was all happening very slowly as they saw shards of glass break off from the windows and the civilians spin in the air. Naruto and Barry focused and concentrated as small bolts of lightning flashed in their eyes and they moved faster than they ever have before to save everyone. 
They moved in blurs of yellow and orange white lightning as they grabbed the civilians and moved them out of the train cars and put them safely on the ground away from the train. They moved quickly and efficiently as they checked every single train car for anyone they missed and made sure they got everyone to safety and the train cars crashed and flipped into one another. Naruto grabbed the last civilian, a woman and put her with the others and then ran with Barry to avoid being squished by a train car and they barely managed to make it. They hit the ground in exhaustion as they nearly escaped being squished like pancakes. Naruto got on his knees when he was blasted in the chest by an ice blast and Barry got blasted in the back. A-R-H. Impulse shouted as they saw Snart walk up to them. Pretty fast, boys. But not fast enough. Thank you. Snart said. For what? Flash asked. You forced me to up my game. Not only with this gun but with how I think about a job. It's been educational. Snart said. Drop it. He heard someone say and turned to see three people walk up behind him and one was carrying a large gun with a huge tank. This is a prototype cold gun, four times the size, four times the power. I was wondering who you were talking to. Snart said. Hey, unless you wanna taste your own medicine, I'd back the hell up. Cisco warned him. Your hands are shaking. You've never killed anyone. Snart said. There's a first time for everything, Captain Cold. Sisko warned him as Snart chuckled. I will shoot you. Snart looked at the flash and imbecile before smirking. You win, kid. Snart said as he turned around and walked away. Hey, leave the diamond. Sisko shouted. Don't push your luck. Snart said as he left. Sisko then pressed the off switch on the gun as Caitlin and Felicity dropped the large tank. I couldn't shoot him if I wanted to. This is actually the Star Labs vacuum cleaner. Sisko said as Naruto chuckled. Felicity ran over to help Barry and Naruto as they sat up and the ice around them broke. Naruto and Barry smiled at Sisko who just managed to save their butts. Thanks you. Barry said as Sisko smiled and shook his hand. Barry called Joe and the CCPD about the train derailment. Luckily no one was killed so that was a plus. After that. They went back to Star Labs where Caitlin looked over Naruto and Barry just to make sure they were okay but they were fine. Sisko was on the computer, trying to track down Snart. We've been trying to track Snart, but he must have disconnected the signal somehow. Sisko said. We'll find him, Sisko. Together. Barry said as he and Sisko smiled. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I'm getting several cups of hot chocolate and then settling down to finish my homework. A sentence I'd never thought I'd have to say anymore. Naruto joked as Sisko and Barry chuckled. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Naruto super sped out of Star Labs and back home while Barry looked around and saw Felicity walking up. You have a great team here, Barry. Speaking of teams, I should get back to mine. Felicity said as Barry nodded. It was a pleasure to meet you, Ms. Smoke. Please extend a hello to the arrow for us. Doctor. Wells said. I will. Felicity replied. Bye Felicity. Barry said. Bye Barry. She replied as they hugged goodbye. She is a remarkable woman. Doctor. Wells said as Barry smiled. Yeah, she is. Barry said as Felicity left. Doctor. Wells had one more potent conversation with Sisko about the dangers of his actions and to never do something like that again. Barry said goodbye to one Felicity one more time on her train back to Starling City. Naruto went back to the shelter to quickly finish his homework and then got some sleep. He was blissfully unaware of the old foe he would face tomorrow. Line break xxxxx. The next day, Naruto woke up bright and early to head to his morning classes. He had two early classes and after he finished his work for those classes, he had the rest of the day and tomorrow off. Naruto decided to head to the mall to get some new sneakers since his old ones were worn out. Naruto was in the mall, went to Foot Locker and got himself a new pair of shoes. He was heading to the food court when he heard a commotion from the jewelry store on the ground floor. He heard loud crashes and things breaking along with gunshots. Naruto ran down the escalator pushing past the crowd of people running for their lives and got to the ground floor. He ran through the east wing and saw a large amount of broken glass all over the floor along with mall stands knocked over,
garbage cans smashed to pieces and several mall security guards and cops on the floor. Some cops were not moving while some were groaning on the ground. Naruto ran over to one cop who was groaning in pain as the cop held his stomach. It's okay. What happened? Naruto asked. I don't know. One guy, attacked us. The cop said as Naruto called 911 and told them about the officers that were down and needed help. Naruto then looked at the store the cops were outside of and it was an expensive jewelry store. All the displays were smashed with almost all the merchandise gone. He looked around to see if he could figure out where the thief went but all he saw was a crowd of people taking cover in other stores and the air duct of the jewelry store smashed open. Naruto helped the injured cops and security guards as best as he could and helped them a lot since Tsunade and Shizune had taught him some first aid. He made a makeshift sling for a cop's broken arm, a makeshift bandage for a gunshot wound and rested everyone against a bench. The guards were all suffering serious muscle and tissue damage so Naruto couldn't do much. Luckily, the cops soon arrived and helped take care of the wounded officers. The paramedics came after them and announced two of the officers were dead while the others would need to go to the hospital for treatment. Naruto was talking to one of the officers about what happened when he saw Joe and his partner arrive. I'll take it from here, Jones. Joe said as Officer Jones walked away. Hey, Naruto. Hey, Joe. Naruto replied. This is my partner, Eddie Thon. Joe said as Thon and Naruto shook hands. Naruto's a friend of Barry's from Star Labs. Really, you look a little young. Thon said as Naruto chuckled. I get that a lot. Glad you guys made it. Naruto said. Well with two cops dead, Captain Singh's gonna make this top priority. Did you see what happened? Joe asked. No, I just heard a loud crash and some gunshots and ran down to see what happened. The store was smashed. The cops were on the ground and whoever did this was gone and made off with the jewels. Naruto said as Joe nodded. Eddie, coordinate with the officers and get a description of our killer and then put out an APB. Joe said as Thon nodded and walked away while Joe and Naruto excused themselves. You ran down here? Joe asked. I couldn't use my speed in the mall, it was too crowded but something seemed off. Even at my normal speed. I should have made it down here to see whoever did this but the person was long gone. And how he took out all these cops and the way everything around here was smashed. I don't think our killer is exactly, normal. Naruto said as Joe nodded. Just great. That's gonna make things a lot more complicated. Joe said as they saw Barry arrived while the paramedics left with the injured cops. Hey, guys. Barry said as he walked up to them. Hey. Bar, Joe said. Glad you could make it. Naruto said. Yeah, well, it's a good thing you were here. Barry said to Naruto. Yeah, but not exactly how I imagined my day off to go. Naruto said as Barry chuckled and began collecting evidence. Naruto had to stay back since he wasn't CCPD but Joe and Barry would keep him filled in. Barry did his analysis of the crime scene and analyzed the bodies of the dead cops. Bar, what do we got? Joe asked. Not exactly sure but I think Naruto's right. Our killer might be a metahuman. Barry said as he walked over to the first dead body. Officer Lee over here, Petachia on his face in the whites of his eyes and this bruising around the neck indicated the killer put him in a choke hold. So he was strangled? Joe asked. No, the cause of death was this pierce in his back. Barry said as he rolled Officer Lee over and showed Joe and very shallow but deep stab wound in Lee's back. It had enough force to break skin and bone and start to come out through the other side. Damn, no knife can do that. Joe said, I'm guessing the killer put Officer Lee in a choke hold as the others gathered around. He then killed him before moving to his next victim, Officer Donner. Barry said as they moved over to his body. Joe noticed the weird scarring over his eyes and mouth like someone held a blowtorch to him. Ah, uh, what did that? Joe asked. The scarring is consistent to exposure from heat or radiation. It's also a side effect of mace spray but none of the cops or guards were carrying mace. His death seems to be a broken neck but there are some other discrepancies I'll need to examine back at the lab. The one thing I'm confident about is that how close the guards were and how fast this was all done, our killer is definitely a metahuman.
Barry said. All right, head back to the station and get all the evidence. Then head to Star Labs. If this is a metahuman, then we're gonna need some help. Joe said as Barry nodded. Line break XXXXX. After Naruto finished up with the police, he grabbed some big belly burger for a snack and super sped back to Star Labs to inform Drive. Wells, Cisco, and Caitlin that there could be another metahuman they would need to deal with. Naruto walked into the cortex to see Cisco working in the lab and Caitlin and Dr. Wells in the med bay. Dr. Wells. Naruto said as Dr. Wells said him and wheeled over. Afternoon. Dr. Wells said with a smile. Well, I think we got another case to work on. There was a murder, robbery at the mall. The thief got away with a store full of precious jewelry. Naruto said. Wow. Caitlin said. Yeah, I was at the mall and when I got there, the thief was gone, two cops were dead and pretty much all the stuff in the store was gone. And whoever did this was fast. Even though I didn't use my speed, I still should have seen the thief and the witnesses didn't see much either. Naruto said. Looks like we got a thief who's seen the town too many times. Sisko said. Naruto, are you sure about this? It's possible this was just a well-prepared thief. Doctor. Wells said. And the way the cops were killed raised an eyebrow. Barry thinks the same. He should be here soon. Naruto said. Do you think it was another speedster? Caitlin asked. It's possible. But the witnesses still should have seen a blur if it was a speedster. Naruto said. Maybe he was invisible. Sisko said as Naruto chuckled. That's not possible. Chuckles that's not possible. Right drive. Wells. Naruto asked as doctor. Wells shrugged. I think that with what we've seen in the past month, that anything is possible. Doctor. Wells said. Well how could this thief turn invisible and go full hollow man? Sisko asked. Maybe our thief has chromophores that allow him to change the color of his skin. It's how cuttlefish blend into their environments. Naruto said. It's a possibility. The particle accelerator explosion might have altered his genetic makeup so that our thief could alter the color of his skin. There has been research into doing that by splicing the DNA of certain animals but not to this extent that it would create invisibility. Dr. Wells said. Well if the guy wants to fence his jewels, maybe we can use that to track him down. Jewels from the store will most likely have serial numbers on them. Naruto said. Right. Cisco get to work on that. Naruto, come. It's time for another training session. Doctor. Wells said as Naruto super sped into his workout clothes. Doctor. Wells sat in the observation booth while Naruto got on the treadmill and began running. Naruto kicked up as fast as he could and his now top speed was about 420 miles per hour. Doctor. Wells monitored Naruto's progress on the computers as he saw that Naruto had progressed tremendously since the fight with Snart. That's good, Naruto. Concentrate. Come on, I know you can go faster. Doctor. Wells said over the speaker as Naruto concentrated. His eyes flashed with sparks of electricity as he concentrated. He took deep breaths and felt the electricity coursing through his body, like some kind of force. Come on, Naruto. Push it. Naruto shouted as he kicked it up a notch. Dr. Wells smiled as he saw Naruto begin to tap into the speed force with his speed kicking up to 500 miles per hour. Naruto kept running and running when all of a sudden, he was hit with a weird feeling. He got a glimpse of three speedsters running through the city with three trails of lightning behind them. He then got another glimpse of himself in a different white, black, and red suit racing against a speedster with blue lightning. He then got a glimpse of something that looked like a Dementor from Harry Potter and that caused him to stop suddenly which was a bad decision. Naruto's sudden stop caused him to fly off the treadmill and smash into the cushions on the wall. Naruto groaned in pain as he definitely felt some of his ribs bruise or fracture. Arg! Naruto groaned in pain as he sat up and grabbed his ribs while drive. Wells came over and Caitlin and Sisko ran into the room. Naruto, are you okay? Caitlin asked as she knelt to help him. Yeah, but I think I fractured some ribs. Naruto groaned as Sisko helped him up and over to the med bay. 
Caitlin sat him down on the gurney as she did a quick x-ray and saw that Naruto had some fractured ribs but they would heal in an hour so she wrapped his torso to help with the pain. You've got six fractured ribs and a bit of a concussion but you should fine in an hour. Caitlin said as Naruto smiled. Thanks, Caitlin. Naruto said as she got back to helping Sisko as doctor. Wells came over. Glad that accelerated healing comes with the super speed. What happened, Naruto? You were doing fine and then something caused you to stop suddenly. Doctor. Wells said. Yeah, I, uh, I was feeling lightheaded. Guess I didn't get enough to eat. Naruto said as doctor. Wells chuckled and handed him one of the high calorie energy bars. Thanks. Guess you didn't have enough to eat at the mall, huh? Doctor. Wells asked with a chuckled. Yeah, well the only downside to having super speed now is the massive metabolism I have. It's not exactly perfect for someone on a budget. Naruto said as Dr. Wells nodded. Don't worry, we'll figure something out. We always do. Dr. Wells said as they saw Barry walk into the cortex. Hey, guys. Barry said as Dr. Wells came over and Naruto walked over with an ice pack on his ribs. Mr. Allen. So, was Naruto's hunch, right? Are we dealing with another metahuman? Doctor. Wells asked. Definitely. The tests I ran back at the lab and the coroner's reports show a lot of inconsistencies and variables that aren't normal. Barry said as he held up a file. So, what do we got? Do we have an invisible man? Sisko asked, excited and curious. No, I don't think so. The wounded officers and guards distinctly remembered seeing a guy in a hoodie but he was fast and agile, way more than a normal human could move. To take out that many guards in that short amount of time and the ways they were killed. Barry said as Naruto looked over the file with Sisko and Caitlin looking over his shoulders. Damn, that's one hell of a stab wound. Sisko said as they saw the picture of the massive stab wound from one of the dead police officers. What made that wound? The wound is too big for a knife and the force broke through four ribs and came out the other side. Caitlin said. When the coroner's report came back, he found traces of fingernail and hair inside the wound. Barry said. So, this wound was made by someone's fist? Naruto asked. That's what the evidence points to. Barry said. It takes about 25 pounds of force to cause a fracture in a human bone and considerable more to break it depending on the area. The ribs are some of the densest areas in our body so it would take a rough estimate of 150 pounds per square inch to break bone. Caitlin said. Well this meta must have some serious juice to break through for and make his way out the other side. Sisko said. So, we don't have an invisible meta but a super strong one. Maybe the particle accelerator increased the muscles in the meta's body to do something like that. Naruto said. Possibly. What other evidence was gathered? Doctor. Wells asked. The scaring on one of the officer's face came back, as snake venom. Barry said as Naruto flipped the page and it was indeed snake venom, viper venom. Oh, why did it have to be snakes? Naruto said with a shiver as he handed the files to Sisko who looked confused. Naruto has a fear of snakes. Doctor. Wells said. A well-justified fear of snakes. They're tiny. Deadly, they're fast and the eyes grab your soul. Naruto said with a shiver as everyone chuckled. So, we have a human snake. It does help some of the evidence make more sense. The way the meta could move with such agility, the strength of the punch like the muscle strands of a snake's body, the force of the chokehold like a snake to constrict and the snake venom. Barry said, and he was able to escape using the mall's vent system, able to maneuver through like a snake with ease. Do you think this meta can shed his skin like a snake? Sisko asked. We'll ask him when we catch him. Catlin said as Naruto thought of something. Here's a thought. Maybe this meta was a scientist doing research with snakes and was exposed during the particle accelerator explosion which led to these powers. That would also explain how he has the strength and the venom. Naruto said. What do you mean? Barry asked. Well. Biologically snakes either can constrict or use venom. No snake does both. Naruto said. Wrong. Super snake can. Sisko said as Naruto looked at him. I hope you're not thinking of naming him that. 
Naruto said as Sisko pat Naruto on the shoulder. Oh, Naruto, ye of little faith, Sisko replied. So, did the skin cells from the wounds give us any way to identify the meta? Doctor, Wells asked. There wasn't enough DNA to run a test. Barry said. Maybe the security cameras will give us something. Naruto said as he sat down at the computers and began hacking into the CCTV cameras at the mall. When did you learn to hack? Doctor, Wells asked. I might have had Felicity teach me a thing or two when she was free. Naruto said as they chuckled. Got it. Naruto brought up the cameras of the entire day for the Central City Mall. Okay, so the attack happened around 1. Naruto said as he sped up the cameras to that point. The cameras showed the mall on a normal day. People were walking around to stores or window shopping and nothing seemed out of the ordinary. Nothing seems out of the ordinary. Sisko said as Naruto sped it up a bit. There, Naruto said as he highlighted the figure in the video who had a hoodie and a backpack on. The figure walked into the jewelry store and approached a display case contained high-priced jewels. The security guard in the store approached the man and grabbed his shoulder which caused the man to punch the security guard in the face. Oh, Barry said as he saw that the punch. The man then ran at the guard with enhanced agility and contorted his body around the guard and put him in a choke hold and rendered him unconscious. The patrons in the store ran out of the store as the man began smashing display cases and grabbing all the gems and diamonds he could stuff in his bag. The man moved with a sense of urgency and agility that allowed him to take all the stuff in the store in about a minute. Then the police showed up as they pulled their guns out and ordered the man to get on the ground. The figure had his back to the officers and raised his hands. Officer Lee walked forward and when he got close he pulled out a pair of handcuffs. He holstered his gun and grabbed the man's arms to handcuff him but the man turned around quickly, punched the officer across the face, broke his arm and then put him in a chokehold. The other police officers readied their guns as the man slowly walked forward with the police officer in a chokehold as a shield in case the cops tried to shoot him. The man then stabbed his hand through the cop's back with enough force to piece his back like a knife. The man pushed the body forward and knocked him into another cop. One of the cops opened fire which caused everyone in the mall to run. The man ducked and dodged the bullets with expert agility and mobility and moved like a snake. He then ran up to the next cop, broke his arm, grabbed his gun, and struck his leg with his palm and sent him to the ground in pain. The man then moved over to Officer Donner and when he got close, a splash of liquid hit him in the face, causing him to cry out in pain. The man then killed Donner by grabbing his head and snapping his neck. The man then fired another bullet and hit a cop in the leg, and then took out the other cop by striking his legs and torso. The man then dropped the gun and climbed up the air vent in the jewelry store and made his escape just as Naruto arrived on the scene. And that's when Naruto showed up. Barry said as they all had various emotions, watching the footage. That was, awesome. Sisko said as everyone looked at him. In a terribly, tragic way. The guy used the ventilation shaft to escape. That means he must have been scoping out the mall and this store for an escape route. I'll have CSU do a sweep of the roof for any evidence. We never check there. Barry said as he sent a text to Joe. Maybe we won't need it. I think there was a moment during the fight where his hood came off. Naruto said as he moved the footage back a few seconds to the fight. Hang on. Naruto moved it to the part where the hooded man had Officer Lee in a chokehold and had the other officers back. There was a small one second window during the fight where the man's hood came off but he quickly put it back up. Naruto stopped the footage, zoomed in, and highlighted the man's face. Nice. We'll have CCPD run his face through facial recognition and see if we get a hit. Barry said as Naruto sat back. No need. I know who he is. Naruto said as everyone looked at him. Line break xxxxx. After Naruto's revelation that he knew the killer, everyone was waiting to know how and who he was. Barry called Joe to let him in and to further the investigation with the CCPD. Naruto stood before everyone in the cortex with the frozen image of the killer's face on the screens. Okay, so spill. How do you know this guy? Sisko asked, very curious. 
He was my roommate when I was at Hudson University. His name is Kabuto Yakushi. We met freshman year and we actually hit it off. Naruto said as he brought up some pictures from his Facebook page during freshman year. One of them showed Naruto and Kabuto smiling and hanging outside of the science building and both looked happy. Another picture showed Naruto and Kabuto with a group of other friends, five girls and eight other guys. 1. Everyone could tell how happy Naruto looked in these pictures. He was a different person before his parents' death. We became pretty good friends and it helped that we had similar majors. I was double majoring in theoretical physics and engineering while Kabuto was a double major in biology and physics. Naruto told them. Geez, didn't you kids take it easy in college? Joe asked as everyone chuckled. I remember him. You brought him and some of your friends to Star Labs for a small trip. Dr. Wells said as Naruto nodded. Those were the good old days. He seemed normal. I never suspected anything. Naruto said. Then what happened? Barry asked. It was around our junior year when I began to notice things. He would be gone at weird hours, show up to classes late, make bullshit excuses for his disappearances and some weird items began to appear in our house. Naruto said. Weird how? Caitlin asked. Nothing odd. But brand new computers, new furniture that none of us could afford, new biology equipment for his lab sessions and given how we were both on scholarship and he didn't have a job, I got worried how he was getting these things. Naruto said as they began to understand. So, he was a thief. Joe said, that's what I thought, but I had no idea how serious it was. One night, I followed him when he snuck out at night to an old tea import warehouse that was shut down years ago, Miyagi Import. Naruto said, was that where he was meeting with his crew? Sisko asked, no, it's where he was meeting his father. Naruto said, who is his father? Barry asked, Orochimaru. Naruto said as Joe went wide-eyed. The Orochimaru? Joe asked as Naruto nodded. Yeah, I still remember his face. Naruto replied. Who is Orochimaru? Barry asked. The White Snake. He was the biggest crime boss of the Japanese Yakuza. Terrorized all of Japan for years before he suddenly vanished. Naruto said. It was years later when organized crime divisions of police and the FBI began getting hits that Orochimaru was in America. New York, Metropolis, Gotham, Midway City, he kept moving. It was around five years ago, when we heard rumors that he made his way to Central City but we never had anything to go on. Joe told them. So, I guess the apple didn't fall far from the tree. What was he doing? Cisco asked. Well, during that time a whole bunch of jewelry stores and banks were hit over the course of three years. About a dozen. The jobs were perfectly planned and no trace evidence was found. And a bunch of medical and biology labs were hit as well which was odd. Joe said. Say what you want about Kabuto, he was a dedicated scientist. He was obsessed with science and biology, more specifically enhancing human biology. All of his papers and projects were about enhancing humans to be the ultimate life form on this planet. Naruto said. Geez, sounds a bit Frankenstein. Cisco said, let me guess, he wanted to use snakes to enhance human biology. Caitlin said as Naruto nodded. So, we do have a human snake walking around. Barry said. You mean, Python? Cisco asked with a smile, naming another metahuman. It has a certain, level of fear associated with it. Caitlin said as Dr. Wells chuckled. Well, I think our main objective now is to find this man. Dr. Wells said. You mean, Python? Cisco asked. Fine, we need to find this Python before he hurts anyone else or commits another robbery. Dr. Wells said. What happened after you found out what Kabuto was doing? Did you go to the police? Barry asked. We did get an anonymous call that night about a warehouse full of items and men with guns but when we got there the place was cleared out. I'm guessing that was you. Joe asked Naruto. It was. I wasn't going to go on record against the Yakuza, I treasure my life very much. Naruto said as everyone understood. But I was also going send a letter to the dean about what I saw but by then it was too late. What do you mean? Barry asked. 
I stayed at my parents that night and when I went to school the next day, all of Kabuto's stuff was gone. When I asked, they told me Kabuto left school suddenly and didn't give a reason. Naruto said. Do you think he suspected you? Caitlin asked. I don't think so. I'm here now and didn't wake up with my throat slit, a horse's head in my bed or my parents killed. Maybe after the police raid, Kabuto left with Orochimaru. Naruto said. So, how do we find him now? Sisko asked. We have art feelers out for any kind of fences of jewelry stores that Kabuto might use to sell the diamonds but it's a long list. Joe said. Since Kabuto's done this before, he'll know what to do and how to avoid the police. It's gonna make this harder. Barry said. I'll head to CCPD and go over the evidence. Maybe there's something CSU missed that can help us narrow down where he is. Don't worry, Naruto. We'll get him. Joe said as Naruto nodded. He and Barry left while Sisko and Caitlin were working on ways to stop Python. Naruto was looking at his suit when he saw Dr. Wells move next to him. Something on your mind, Dr. Wells asked. No, it's just that I should have seen this before. With Kabuto, I should have seen something was off but he played me. And because of that, those two cops are dead. And who knows what else he's done. Naruto said as Dr. Wells moved in front of him. You can't blame yourself for that. Naruto, you were young and Kabuto seemed and acted like a good friend. And unless you could read minds, there was no way you could have known who he really was. He fooled me and your parents too. And whatever Kabuto has become, it's his decisions he has made that are his to answer for. No one forced him to steal or to murder and you shouldn't feel responsible for what has happened. Doctor. Wells said as Naruto nodded. Maybe, but now I have the abilities to stop him and I'm going to. I'm not going to let him get away this time. Naruto said with confidence as Dr. Wells nodded. And we'll help. From what we've seen, it's clear that Kabuto has a keen grasp on his new abilities. Dr. Wells said as he moved over to the computers. Enhanced strength and agility, projectile venom, not to mention the enhanced bone and muscle structure to maneuver like that. You have to wonder if he can do all of that, how much man is left. Caitlin stated as they nodded. Still, he has to have been studying his powers for a while. I wonder if he's cold-blooded. Sisko said as Naruto shivered. I'm just surprised he learned his abilities so quickly. It must have come as quite a shock. Doctor. Wells said. Kabuto was a dedicated scientist. Whenever he encountered a problem he couldn't solve, he spent all of his energy to figure it out. Naruto said as he got an idea. What is it? Dr. Wells asked as Naruto walked over to the computers and rolled Sisko away. Sorry, need to borrow this. Naruto said as he quickly got to work. Okay. Sisko said as he, Caitlin, and Dr. Wells looked at him in confusion. What are you doing? I think Kabuto is committing these robberies for a reason. He's trying to figure out exactly what happened to him, and if he figured that out, he's either trying to figure out a cure or how to replicate it. Naruto said as he began hacking into the central city's mainframe, power grid and past police reports. You think he would do that? Caitlin asked. He wanted to expand human biology in college and now that he has changed, he's going to want to know how. And to do that, he's gonna need money and equipment. Naruto said as they nodded. Which is why he robbed the jewelry store. Sisko said. And it turns out, there have been other reports of small robberies and thefts. Convenience stores and gas stations, ADMs and Hudson University reported its science and biology lab was broken into. Naruto said as he brought up the police reports. How come Joe didn't make the connection? Dr. Wells asked. Because the reporting officers chalked it up to skilled robbers and Kabuto wasn't caught on camera these times. Naruto said. Guess the small time scores weren't enough. He must need a lot of money for better equipment. Caitlin said as Naruto finished typing and smiled. And I know where he is. Miyagi import. Naruto said as he brought up an image of the warehouse. Why would he go back there? The police busted that place already. Sisko said. Exactly, making it the last place they'd look. Plus, a lot of the early robberies were committed near the warehouse district. 
Naruto said. Could be coincidences. Doctor. Wells suggested. Except the warehouse's power consumption for the past few weeks indicates that either the warehouse is open for business or some equipment is drawing a lot of power. Naruto said as he got up and walked over to his suit. Naruto, wait. We'll call Barry and Joe and they'll help you. Sisko said as Naruto shook his head no. No, Kabuto is my friend and I'll stop him. Naruto said. Naruto, drive, Wells said. Doctor, Wells, I need to do this. Please, Naruto said as Doctor. Wells nodded reluctantly. Don't worry, I'll have you guys in here. Naruto said as he pointed to his ear. He then grabbed his suit, quickly put it on and super sped to the warehouse district. He stopped outside the warehouse and put his new and improved goggles on and switched to thermal. All right, Naruto, be our eyes and ears, tell us what you see. Sisko said. He's here. The heat in the warehouse is through the roof and I see his thermal signature. Thanks for the upgrade, Sisko. Naruto said as Sisko chuckled. That's what I'm here for, baby. Now, go get this python. Sisko said as Naruto super sped inside the warehouse and stopped to see dozens of space heaters, lines of medical equipment, a cot, some food, bags of money and jewelry and a hooded figure standing by a workbench, busy with something. Well, it seems I'm not the only one to have undergone changes. Although, I must say your changes are very unique. Kabuto said, still focused on his work. It's over, Kabuto. I saw what you did to those police officers. Now, hand over the jewels and I won't have to hurt you. Impulse said as Kabuto chuckled. Those officers' deaths were unfortunate but necessary. After all, to further the progress of humanity, you need to dirty your hands. Kabuto said as he turned and removed his hood to show that he looked like a half-snake. He kept his hair and was wearing his glasses but his skin was pale white like a snake and had patterns and lines that resembled snake scales and it seemed like his whole body had changed. But the most prominent change was Kabuto's eyes, they were yellow and had vertical slits like a snake. Oh, my god. Caitlin said as they saw everything Naruto was seeing through the camera in his goggles. Kabuto, you don't need to do this. I want to help you. I know people who can help you, fix you. Impulse said as Kabuto chuckled. Fix this. I don't need to be fixed, Naruto. Kabuto said as Impulse went wide-eyed. Just because you were a suit and goggles doesn't mean I don't recognize you. You forget, I knew a lot about you when we were in college. Then let me help you. Impulse said. Help me. You should be helping me, Naruto. Look at us. We have become something greater than what we could ever have dreamed of in college. This is what we were pursuing. To change the world and now we can. Kabuto said with a smile as Naruto shook his head. You're right. But that doesn't mean we should become monsters in order to do that. And you have, Kabuto. Now, last warning. Surrender and this won't have to get ugly. Impulse warned him while Kabuto smirked. We both know you're not a fighter, Naruto. Kabuto. A lot has changed since then. Impulse said as Kabuto chuckled. You have no idea how right you are. Kabuto said as he hit a button on his desk and two gas canisters near Impulse exploded in a puff of yellowish vapor. Kabuto ran as Naruto was immersed in the cloud before he stumbled out and fell to his knees. His breathing began to get heavy, his body felt weird and he couldn't see straight. Violently coughing, Naruto's vision began to blur and his body felt like it was trapped in cement. Naruto. Naruto, talk to me. Doctor. Well said over the comms as Caitlin noticed his vitals began to get erratic. Naruto's vitals, they're all over the place. Caitlin said as Sisko looked at the suit's sensors. Naruto. He hit you with some kind of weaponized venom. It's messing with your body. Sisko said as Naruto began to cough up some blood. No kidding. Impulse replied as he tried to stand up but couldn't. Interesting, isn't it? When I first discovered my powers after the night of the storm 10 months ago, I was doing experiments with snakes and lo and behold I gained some of their characteristics. Including venom production. Venom from cobras of the neurotoxic variety are my favorite. The venom is attacking your nervous system. In a normal person, a strong enough dose would cause instant paralysis but it seems you're much stronger. 
Kabuto said as he grabbed Naruto from behind and threw him like a ragdoll into a pillar. Ah! Uh, Impulse groaned at the impact as he hit the ground and began to crawl away. Of course, the added strength is nice as well. Kabuto said as he walked towards Naruto. He then picked him up and put him in a chokehold. Ack! Impulse gagged as he tried to pry himself free. Don't worry, it'll all be over soon. Kabuto said as Naruto tried to get free. We've got to help him. Caitlin said as they tried to think of an idea to help him as doctor. Wells began typing on his computer. Naruto, hang on. I've hacked into the warehouse's security system. It's about to rain. Doctor, Wells said as he activated the fire alarm system in the warehouse. The alarm system blared and it activated the sprinklers. Kabuto let Naruto go and ran over to his workstation. No, Kabuto shouted as he ran over to protect his research. Naruto stood up and saw the water short circuit his computers and the heaters. It began to get colder in the warehouse and Naruto got an idea. Kabuto turned and glared at Naruto. You, you ruined my research. I'm about to ruin a lot more. Impulse said as he began running around Kabuto like a tornado. As Impulse ran around, the wind began to pick up and that combined with the water began to affect Kabuto as he started to shiver. Impulse kept running and running as Kabuto fell to his knees, rubbing his arms to keep himself warm so Impulse ran forward and punched Kabuto across the face and knocked him off his feet, through the air and sent him tumbling across the ground, unconscious. Naruto stopped as he coughed some more and the sprinklers turned off. His breathing was still heavy but much better than before. Naruto. Naruto, talk to me. Are you okay? Doctor. Wells asked as Naruto cleared his throat. Yeah, sort of. Naruto replied as Doctor. Wells, Caitlin and Sisko breathed a sigh of relief. Sisko, prep a cell in the pipeline. I'm coming in. Naruto said as he grabbed Kabuto and ran back to Star Labs. Sisko managed to prep a cell with reinforced glass and paneling so that Kabuto couldn't punch or climb his way out. Caitlin called Joe and the CCPD raided the warehouse and took back all the money and jewels. The group was in the cortex as Sisko filled Barry and Joe in while Caitlin did a final checkup on Naruto in the med bay. So, this Kabuto was an actual snake? Joe asked. Oh yeah, freaky scales and all. Sisko said as Barry nodded. Well, at least Python won't be able to hurt anyone anymore now that he's safely locked away in the pipeline. Barry said. Yeah, Naruto really showed some serious guts to go in by himself. Looks like Impulse is going to give the streak a run for his money. No pun intended. Joe said as Barry chuckled. Naruto walked out of the med bay as he put on his jacket. Naruto, how do you feel? Barry asked. Ah, not bad. Still a bit sore. Nothing some rest won't fix. Naruto said as he cracked his neck and stretched a bit. Sore is an understatement. That venom would have killed any normal person. Caitlin said as Naruto smiled. But I did it. With your help. Drive. Wells. Naruto said as Dr. Wells smiled. Just glad my hunch paid off. Snakes are cold-blooded animals so I figured Kabuto would have adopted that property as well. Dr. Wells said. Still, it was you who managed to find Kabuto and bring him down. I'm proud of you, Naruto. Thank you, Drive, Wells, Naruto replied. Now, I think we should all go celebrate Naruto's first solo takedown. Who's ready to party? Sisko asked as Naruto exhaled. Thanks, Sisko. I appreciate the gesture but money's a bit tight at the moment. Naruto said as everyone nodded. Actually, Naruto. I've been meaning to give you something for a while. Doctor. Wells said as he handed Naruto a manila folder with a label from Weathersby and Stone Law Firm. Weathersby and Stone. Barry asked as Naruto opened the manila folder and took out some papers. He began reading, went wide-eyed and then passed out. Naruto. Caitlin shouted as she checked on him. Barry picked up the files and went wide-eyed like Naruto. Joe looked as well and was shocked. Damn. Joe said. What is it? Sisko asked as he walked over to see. Naruto's parents were always people who looked to the future and that meant the future of their son. They prepared a nice trust for him should something happen to them. Doctor. Wells said. 
Yeah, a really nice trust. Cisco said at the $10 million trust. Damn, Naruto's loaded now. Minato and Kashina were very skilled scientists and their work both with and before Star Labs was very profitable but they were simple people. They set aside most of it for Naruto. Doctor. Wells said as he looked at Naruto. And he never got this because he fell off the grid after their funeral. Barry said as Dr. Wells nodded. An agent from the law firm got in contact with me and handed me a copy of the statement should Naruto get in contact with me. I wasn't there for Naruto before, that won't happen again. Dr. Wells said as they nodded. Man, is Naruto going to be happy? You think it'd be too much to have him treat us to dinner? Cisco asked as everyone chuckled. Line break xxxxxx. After the capture of Python, the team got back into their usual routine of training and saving the city but no new metahumans had appeared. It had been a week and Barry invited Naruto, Cisco, and Caitlin to a bar for a night out with Iris and Eddie. Lucky for Naruto, with the new trust fund he found out about he wasn't as strapped for cash as he normally was. He was financially secure and he even donated a million dollars to Tsunade because it was too much for him and it was a thank you for her helping him at a tough point of his life. Naruto was drinking his fifth beer as he watched Eddie and Iris play some darts. Caitlin and Iris were talking while Sisko talked with Eddie for a bit. Naruto finished his beer and noticed he wasn't feeling buzzed at all. He walked over to the bar where Barry was to get another drink. Excuse me, can I get some whiskey? Naruto asked as the bartender nodded and got him a small glass of whiskey. He then noticed Barry looking at Iris, lovingly. You okay, Barry? Yeah, Barry replied as they saw Eddie lift Iris up and hug her. Hey, if it makes you feel any better. Half of relationships don't last that long. Don't give up, Naruto said as Barry nodded and they cheer their drinks. Barry took a sip of beer and Naruto took a sip of whiskey when Iris walked over. Hey, you two, having fun? Iris asked as Naruto and Barry nodded. Yeah, Naruto replied. I'm glad you invited Caitlin and Sisko. Iris told Barry. They're cool, right? Barry asked. They saved your life, Barry. That makes them the coolest people I've ever met. It's nice you guys became friends. You too, Naruto. Believe me, Barry's the best friend there is. Two friends, old and new. Iris said as she raised her shot glass. Naruto and Barry raised their shot glasses and drank them with ease. Ooh, I'm up. Wish me luck. Iris said as she playfully punched Barry in the shoulder and walked back to Eddie. Naruto drank the rest of his whiskey in one gulp and felt fine. Barry, do you feel anything? Naruto asked. No, not at all. Barry said as he ordered five more shots as the bartender poured them and handed them to Barry on a tray. Come on. Barry and Naruto walked over to the table where Sisko and Caitlin were standing by. Guys, I think we have a problem. Barry said. We all do when guys like him exist. Sisko said, looking at Eddie. Yeah, he's so hot. Caitlin said as she realized what she said. Uh, I mean, genetically speaking. Because I'm a geneticist, of course. Oh my god, do I sound like Felicity? I'm not talking about Eddie. I'm talking about this. Barry said as he used his super speed to slam the five shots down in three seconds. I can't feel anything. Yeah, that's usually what happens when you drink too much. Cisco said as he and Caitlin chuckled. No, that's not it. The alcohol is not affecting us. I've been drinking with you guys and no buzz. I'm literally, completely fine. Naruto told them. It's your hypermetabolism. I need a sample. Caitlin said as she opened her purse. I'll get more shots. Cisco said as he left for the bar. I swear I had a vacutainer in here. Caitlin said. Wait, you carry a blood collection kit in your purse? Naruto asked. You have your hobbies, I have mine. Caitlin replied. Caitlin pricked Naruto and Barry and drew a small blood sample to run some tests later. Sisko returned with a tray of shots and they all took a drink. Sisko and Caitlin felt it but to Naruto and Barry, they felt like they were drinking water or juice. Nothing. Sisko asked as Barry shook his head no. No, this is ridiculous. I'm only 25 and my drinking days are over. 
Barry said as Naruto looked at him. Oh no, you can't drink anymore at 25. Boo hoo, Barry you had two more years than I did. Naruto said as he hit his head on the table in despair as Caitlin rubbed his shoulder. Okay, Alan, you're up. Eddie said as Barry got up but Eddie's phone rang. There's been a bombing on Aiden Pass. Sorry, babe got to go. Naruto, Barry, Sisko, and Caitlin all shared a look and nodded while Iris grabbed her purse. I've got an early shift at Jitters. Barry, we'll catch up tomorrow. Iris said as she left. It's getting late anyway, so I'm just gonna, Barry said when Iris left but as soon as she was gone from sight, Naruto and Barry left the building and super sped to Star Labs, grabbed their suits and ran to the building. They stopped and slid to a stop in the alley next to the building and saw the building. The east side of the 15th floor windows were destroyed with fire and smoke spewing out. They also saw a window washer on a platform about to break. Guys, there's a window washer and he's about to fall. Flash said as Naruto put on his goggles and it analyzed how high he was. Naruto then switched it to thermal and saw there was a security guard stuck on the 15th floor, trapped by the fire. That's not the only problem, we've got a security guard stuck on the 15th floor. He's trapped, Impulse said. The fire department is five minutes out. Sisko said as the fire began to spread. We don't have time, Impulse said as Barry got an idea. How fast would we need to go to run up the side of a building? Flash asked. How far up do you need to go? Cisco asked. 55 meters, Cisco. Impulse said as Cisco began some calculations but the wires holding up the window washer were about to snap. Cisco, hurry. Just run really fast and you'll be fine but you need to maintain your velocity on the way down, or, Caitlin said. Or what? Flash asked. Splat. Caitlin said as Naruto sighed. Great. Okay. Come on, Naruto. You can do this, he said, trying to pump himself up. He and Barry then took off running as fast as they could and were running up the side of the building. The Flash ran straight and grabbed the window washer while Impulse took a turn and ran through a destroyed window, grabbed the security guard, and ran back out. The Flash ran back down the side of the building and stopped when he hit the ground and let go of the window washer. He was about to start running when he saw Iris looking straight at him so he quickly began vibrating his face so she didn't recognize him. He then ran and Impulse quickly followed by after dropping the security guard next to the window washer. Iris was amazed as she saw two streaks run past her, one with dark yellow lightning and the other with a white and crimson lightning trail. Wow, Iris said. Line break xxxxxx. Come morning. Barry and the CCPD were all over the bombing. They had pushed out all their resources on this in case it could be a terrorist bombing but the early hypothesis was that it wasn't. Barry was getting some samples as Joe finished with the building security. Barry, what have you got? Joe asked. Bombers typically have their own unique signatures. Crimped wires, fragmentation. The level of sophistication is telling once I've analyzed it. You show me a bomb, I can find a clue in it. Barry said. Sounds like there's a bit coming. Joe stated. Yeah, I haven't found any sign of an oxidizing agent. It's as if the floor just blew itself up. Barry said. Things just don't blow up. Joe replied. Did Naruto see anything when he was up here? No, he just saw fire. No sign of a bomb and no sign of the bomber. Barry said as Eddie walked up to them. Security guard said our bomber was a woman, red hair. Also, cut the security camera's feed. There's no footage, but there might be something else. Eddie said as they walked over to a room with a destroyed door handle. A small charge blew off the door handle. They walked into the room to see rows of file cabinets. Any idea what's missing? Joe asked. My guess is one of these files. But it's gonna take days to figure out which one. Eddie said. Let's let Barry do his thing. Joe said as he and Eddie left. Barry used his super speed and began rummaging through the file cabinets to find whatever was missing. But the first 10 cabinets had nothing missing until he found a VA file holder that was empty with the serial number on it. Barry bagged up all the evidence to head back to the CCPD. 
Joe and Eddie walked into the CCPD and moved to their desks to see some U.S. military soldiers waiting outside of Captain Singh's office and Captain Singh talking to someone. Joe looked at Officer Vukovic for some answers. What's going on? Joe asked. I don't know, but they came in like they own the place. Officer Vukovic said as Captain Singh left his office with the man he was speaking to. He was dressed like an army general with badges and everything. Singh looked at Joe and Eddie and motioned them over. General Eiling, this is Detective West. Singh said as General Eiling shook Joe's hand. Detective. Eiling greeted him. What's this all about? Joe asked. The army's taking over the bombing investigation. Singh said. I'll need everything you have. Physical evidence, photographs, witness interviews and all your personal notes. Eiling said. I've been on the job nearly 20 years, I've never heard of the army investigating anything civilian. Joe said. Well, it's not civilian. She's one of ours. Eiling said as Joe nodded. We'll send over everything we got. Joe said as Eiling smiled and nodded. Very king of you. I think we'll take it now, though. Eiling said as Joe looked at Singh. Give them what they want, Joe. Singh said. You heard them Joe, give me what I want. Eiling said as Joe nodded. He turned to grab some of the boxes and shared a look of uneasiness with Eddie. They handed over all the information as Barry walked in from the elevator. Hey, what's going on? Barry asked. General Eiling is relieving us from the bombing case. Give these men everything that's relevant. Joe told him. Sure thing, yeah. Barry said as he handed a soldier the box of evidence. He took it and they walked away but Barry quickly grabbed the evidence bag holding the VA file. You and a few civilians from STAR. Labs might want to check into that. Joe told him. I think we will. Barry replied as he left. While Barry was working the crime scene, Naruto had finished an early morning class and went over to STAR. Labs for some more training. Something Cisco was more than happy to help him with, and he had a special surprise in store. Naruto changed into some workout clothes as he walked into one of the old science labs that Cisco had turned into a training room. He walked in to see Cisco and Dr. Wells standing in the next room looking through a glass window. We're not training my speed this time? Naruto asked. No, today we're training your reflexes and your mind's ability to think in stressful situations. So, I've had Cisco develop a little test. Dr. Wells said over the intercom. Now, if you'll step onto the X in the middle of the room, we can begin, young Padawan. Cisco said as Naruto did. So, I figured the best way to test your reflexes and your brain's power to think would be to replicate a situation you would encounter in the field. Heads up. Suddenly, a computer-controlled assault rifle came out of the wall and fired at Naruto as Naruto managed to dodge at the last second and saw it was a BB pellet. Naruto looked at the pellet as it rolled on the ground. BBs? Naruto asked. Cheaper than bullets and a good idea of what you're gonna be facing. Cisco said as he activated four more controlled assault rifles as Naruto smiled and cracked his neck. All right. Come on. Naruto shouted as the rifles fired and Naruto began speeding around the room, dodging back and forth, zipping like a spinning top. Cisco monitored his vitals and the computers that controlled the BB guns while drive. Wells checked Naruto's speed and was impressed that he crushed his previous time of 550 miles per hour and was now averaging 600 miles per hour. He's doing well, Cisco said to Dr. Wells as they saw that Naruto was managing to dodge the BBs well. Yes, and his speed is improving. I think he's even progressing faster than Barry. Dr. Wells said as Cisco chuckled. Don't tell Barry that. Cisco joked as he decided to kick it up a notch. All right, level two. More toy rifles came out of the walls and began firing which made it a little harder but Naruto kept dodging and speeding around the room, looking behind and over his shoulder to keep an eye on any stray BB that would hit him. Cisco pressed another button and a rope launcher fired a bolo that managed to catch Naruto off guard and wrap around his feet. Naruto fell on the ground with a loud thud as the BBs hit him all over. Ow, 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 Naruto shouted as Sisko quickly turned the rifles off. Naruto sat up as he rubbed his face where the bruises of the BB were. 
Okay, that hurt. Nicely done, Naruto but we've still got room to improve. Doctor. Well said as Naruto nodded. Yeah, I'm just glad they were BBs. Naruto said as he untied the bolo around his feet. They kept training for another hour and then took a break. Naruto was getting his bruises and cuts looked at by Caitlin just to be on the safe side but Naruto swore he was fine. Ow. Naruto said as Caitlin rubbed some cleaning alcohol on a bad cut. Sorry. The cuts and bruises should be gone in an hour but take it easy for a bit. We don't want them to get worse. Caitlin said as Naruto nodded. I still can't believe you shot him, Sisko. What? Doctor. Wells wanted to test Naruto's reflexes and it was a better idea than rubber bullets. Those suckers hurt. Sisko joked as Dr. Wells wheeled in. Still the results are promising. Naruto is showing enhanced reflexes when he uses his speed. Probably a great deal more enhanced than Mr. Allen. Dr. Wells said as Naruto smiled. Oh, imbecile giving the Flash a run for his money. I'd pay to see a race between you two. Sisko said as everyone chuckled. Then you'd be wise to put your money on Naruto. Everyone heard as they turned to see a blonde woman with a large bust holding Kurama and a brunette next to her with a small pig and a large bag on the floor next to them. He was quick even before he got his powers. Tsunade, Shizune what are you doing here? Naruto asked as he stood up. Well it was lunchtime so we'd figure a nice ramen break was in order. Shizune said as Kurama jumped out of Tsunade's arms and crawled up to Naruto's shoulder. Besides, Kurama missed you. And did it give us a chance to see where you spend all your time? Tsunade said as she looked around. Impressive. Well, I'm sure you know Caitlin, Sisko, and Dr. Wells. Guys, you know Tsunade and Shizune. Naruto said as he walked over to the bag and put it on a nearby table. It's great to see you again. Caitlin said as she shook their hands and Sisko and Dr. Wells did the same. Glad you could come visit. Dr. Wells said as Sisko walked over to Naruto when he smelled the amazing ramen. Well, we wanted to see how Naruto was doing. But I guess he's in the best of hands. Tsunade said as she looked at him and Sisko digging in. He's a special kid. That he is. And we're doing the best we can for him to make sure he stays safe. Dr. Wells said as Caitlin pet Tun Tun. And having him is a big help. He saves us several part-time hands. Tsunade joked as Dr. Wells chuckled. So, what do you do here exactly? Shizune asked as she looked at the computers and labs and at Naruto and Barry's suit on display. Well, here is where we monitor the city for any unusual crimes or signs of other metahumans. And the Med Bay is where Caitlin helps Naruto and the Flash should they get hurt which happens a lot. Sisko said as he slurped some noodles. Don't worry, we heal fast. Naruto told them. Wow, this is impressive equipment. Is that a radiological EKG in a deep tissue scanner? Tsunade asked as Caitlin nodded in surprise. Yeah, how did you know that? Caitlin asked. Oh, Tsunade was a doctor before she opened the shelter. Naruto told her. Really? Caitlin asked. Yup, you're looking at the former hematologist, radiologist, and vascular surgeon of John Hopkins Hospital. Naruto said as they looked at Tsunade who cracked a small smile. And Shizune was her resident. Very impressive. Doctor. Wells said. Well that was a long time ago. I helped people then and I'm helping kids who need me more now. Besides, the three of you have been helping Naruto and he's been helping this city. Tsunade said they smiled. Burp they heard and turned to Naruto. Wasn't me. Naruto said pointing to Sisko who chuckled. Sorry, that was amazing ramen. Sisko said as put his empty bowl down. I'm glad someone else praises Shizune's amazing cooking. Naruto said as he pat Sisko on the shoulder. Showering me with praise won't make me make ramen for you every day, Naruto. Shizune replied and Naruto grumbled. Hey, guys, they heard as they saw Barry walk in holding a folder in his hands. Oh, we have guests. It's okay, Barry. Their family. Barry, this is Tsunade Senju and Shizune Kato. They own the shelter that I've been staying at and helped me through a tough time in my life. Shizune, Tsunade, meet Barry Allen.
the fifth member of our team and my speeding partner. Naruto said as Barry shook Tsunade and Shizune's hands. It's nice to meet you both. Barry said as Tsunade and Shizune smiled. Likewise, Naruto told us you're a CSI with the police. You seem kind of young for that. Tsunade said as Barry chuckled. I get that a lot. Barry replied. Mr. Allen, I'm guessing you have a new case for us. And that this pertains to the building fire you and Naruto were present at last night. Dr. Wells said as Barry nodded and held up the file as Cisco came by and took it and sat down at the computers. Yeah, there were some discrepancies with the crime scene and I think we've got a meta-human bomber on our hands. Barry said as they gathered around. That's not a good mix. Naruto said as he looked at the file. So, the bombing was a cover for stealing a VA file. That's all you got. A VA file number? Cisco asked. The SCPD have been ordered off the case. Barry said. Who has the authority to do that? Shizune asked. The army. Some general came in and ordered us off the case. His name was Eiling. Barry told them. General Wade Eiling. Doctor. Wells said as everyone looked at him. You know him? Barry asked. Yes, I know him. About 10 years ago, General Wade Eiling contacted STAR Labs to develop enhanced gene therapies for soldiers. I was interested in the potential medical benefits for civilians. General Eiling really wanted to develop mind-reading capabilities for interrogation purposes. Dr. Wells said as Caitlin remembered this and Naruto remembered something as well. Wait, I think I remember that. Yeah, I remember my dad was in a really foul mood for a year when you were working on these experiments. He wasn't happy and I think he must have gotten into a fight at one point because my mom chastised him for throwing a punch. Naruto said as Dr. Wells looked at him. Yes, Minato was vocal on his opinions of working with General Eiling and once he figured out what the General's tests were he came to me to shut them down. And got into a physical altercation with General Eiling. Doctor. Wells said as Naruto looked at him. In other words, your father sucker punched him across the jaw. Laughing, oh, I would have paid to see that. Naruto said as the others chuckled. I ended the study shortly after but our split was less than amicable. Doctor. Wells said. Well, he took the evidence I collected on the bombing. Everything but the folder. Barry said as Wells looked at it. Well, lucky for us, the VA finally joined the new millennium and digitized their records. Cisco said as he brought up the files and saw it was the file of a soldier with a lot of redacted information. A lot of redacted info but our girl's name is Betty Sans Susie, an EOD specialist for the army. Eid, Caitlin asked. Bomb disposal. Naruto told her as she nodded. Is there an address? Barry asked. Hold on, here we go. One person in case of emergency, Cameron Scott, Inglewood. Cisco said as Barry grabbed his suit and left before Naruto could go with him. Well, he's fast, Tsunade said as Naruto was ready to go when Dr. Wells stopped him. It's all right, Naruto. It's just a recovery, I'm sure Mr. Allen will be fine on his own. Dr. Wells said as Naruto nodded and they waited for Barry to return. Barry. How's it going? Cisco asked as they waited for him to reply but he didn't. Cisco was going to try again when the bio feed from his suit wasn't responding with a signal. What the hell? No signal. Caitlin said. Barry. Then a whoosh of air and yellow lightning ran past them as they saw Barry walk out of the med bay as he put on a STAR labs shirt and sweatpants. Uh. Naruto said. Don't ask. Barry told them. I'm gonna ask, where's my suit? Cisco asked. It's, gone. Barry said as Cisco looked at him. What do you mean it's gone? What happened to my suit? Cisco asked. It blew up, dude. I managed to get out of it before it went kaboom. Barry said. My suit, went kaboom. Cisco asked, horrified at what he was hearing. Fun fact about Betty Sans Susie, she's not carrying bombs. She touched the emblem on the suit and turned it into a bomb. She's a metahuman, Barry told them. With the ability to cause spontaneous combustion upon tactile contact. Doctor. Wells said as Cisco turned to him. She blew up my suit. Cisco repeated. 
You have like three more. Caitlin said. Okay, I have two and I love that one. Cisco replied. All right, so what else do we know about Betty Sans Susie? Naruto asked. Oh, I don't know, she's pure evil. We're gonna find this bomb girl and send her butt into the pipeline. No one blows my tech to smithereens and gets away with it. Cisco said as he brought up an image of Betty. Unless she looks like that. I don't think she meant to hurt me. Barry said as they looked at him. You think it was an accident? Tsunade asked as Barry nodded. She didn't seem to want to hurt me. I don't think she can control her powers. Barry said. Well, her being a metahuman explains General Eiling's interest in her. Doctor. Wells said Joe walked in. And why he stole the case from us. He doesn't want anyone to know what she can do. Joe said as he saw the two new women in the room. Ah, we have company. Joe, meet Tsunade and Shizun. Tsunade, Shizun meet Detective Joe West. Naruto said as Joe shook their hands. Detective, Tsunade said as Joe smiled. So, human bomb, must be Tuesday in Central City. Joe said. Yes, and General Eiling's not one to give up a potential asset without a fight. Dr. Wells said. Then we have to find her before he does or we'll have a super-powered bomb maker in the hands of the army. Naruto said as everyone nodded and got to work while Barry left with Joe to have a conversation. Naruto stuck around to help Caitlin and Sisko track down Betty while Tsunade and Shizun left to go to back to the shelter but they would come by often to check in and get to explore the med lab. They kept looking over her file, seeing if any of her non-redacted info could help but there wasn't much to go on until Cisco managed to get a backtrace on the military's radio frequency so they could follow Eiling's search. Naruto was combing through the files when Cisco got a hit. I got it. The army just sent out a call to Eiling. The lovely Ms. Sans Susie was just spotted in Englewood. Cisco said. The same neighborhood as Dr. Harold Hadley, the military surgeon who performed several procedures on her. That's why she was looking for the folder. Caitlin said. She's probably trying to figure out what happened to her. Naruto said as they nodded. All right, I'm on it. Naruto quickly grabbed his suit and sped off to the address of Dr. Hadley. Naruto sped through the streets until he came to the center for inflicted wounds where drive. Hadley was working. He sped into the room as a gush of air caused Betty and Dr. Hadley to look at him in awe and confusion. Naruto then noticed green lights from the windows and before he could do something a bullet came in and hit Betty in the arm. Naruto saw Hadley reach into his desk for something and not wanting to risk it, he quickly sucker punched him and knocked him out. He then knelt to check on Betty. You okay? Impulse asked as he heard footsteps outside. Look, I can get you out of here. I can help you understand what happened to you. How? Betty asked. Because it happened it happened to me. Impulse said. Please. Betty nodded when Impulse saw a flashbang break through the window and enter the room so he quickly grabbed it and tossed it back outside before it went off. Eiling and his men were hit with the loud noise and light while Impulse grabbed Betty and ran back to STAR Labs. Line break XXXXX. Naruto retrieved Betty and took her to the cortex as Barry came by so drive. Wells could explain how the particle accelerator explosion led to people like Naruto, Barry and Betty gaining powers. He was explaining everything as one of the computer screens played the data and a simulation of what happened. As the detonation dispersed throughout Central City, a number of people were exposed to a wave of unquantifiable energy. Naruto and Mr. Alan were among those affected, as are you. You were in Central City 10 months ago. Dr. Wells said as Caitlin handed Betty a pair of special gloves. When she grabbed them, they didn't explode. Uh, I had just returned from Afghanistan. I was there defusing roadside bombs and, shrapnel ripped through me. I was flown back stateside, spent months at the base recuperating. And the next thing I know, I became the thing that almost killed me. And Eiling's favorite new lab rat. Betty told them as she put on the gloves. The dark matter must have combined with the bomb particulate inside your body. Caitlin told her. I thought Eiling did this to me. Betty said as they looked at her. 
Eiling is not smart enough to create someone like you but clever enough to see your value. Dr. Wells said. And if we don't stop him, then we'll bomb making super soldiers controlled by the US Army and I've watched enough movies to know that ends bad. Especially, if someone like Eiling is in control. Naruto said. Do you know of any others who were changed? Betty asked. There've been a few. Caitlin said. But no one that looks like you. Sisko said as Barry and Naruto chuckled and Sisko realized what he said. I'm sorry, that was inappropriate. Please don't leave. I know how to perform a lobotomy. Caitlin warned him. Disregarding Sisko's statement, Betty we'll do everything we can to help you. Star Labs is one of the most advanced labs in the world and with Dr. Wells, we'll come up with something. Naruto said as Dr. Wells and Betty smiled. Betty was moved to one of the med labs and was sitting on the gurney as they used the computers to run rudimentary scans of her body and her molecular structure for their tests and to figure out how her powers worked. Her cellular structure is unlike anything I've ever seen before. Dr. Wells said. And her nitrogen levels are off the charts. Caitlin said as they looked at the scans. You think that's the source of her power? Naruto asked. It's a possibility. In order to help her, we must understand her power and to understand her power, have to study her in action. Dr. Wells said. You want her to blow stuff up? Yes, now we're talking. Sisko said, excited. Not in here. She's too unstable. Dr. Wells told him. I know. Sisko replied. I know you know. Dr. Wells replied. Caitlin walked into the lab to check on Betty and prepare some tests. So, this is your life now, huh? Testing people like me, Betty asked. Stopping people like you. It's not what I thought I'd be doing. Caitlin said as she prepared a syringe to take a blood sample. Actually, aside from Barry and Naruto, you're the first metahuman that we've tested. Metahuman? Betty asked. It's just a term. Caitlin said when she noticed Betty was bleeding. Oh, my God. What happened? Betty rolled up her sleeve to shot a bullet wound. Why didn't you say you were shot? Caitlin asked. It just grazed me. Betty said as Caitlin looked closer and noticed something. There's something in there. Caitlin said as Naruto and Dr. Wells looked alarmed. Caitlin grabbed a pair of tweezers and carefully pulled out a small round object from her wound. A tracker. Betty said as everyone was alarmed. Oh crap. Naruto said as the proximity alarm went off and Naruto checked the cameras and saw it was General Eiling with a squad of armed soldiers. Lock down the pipeline. Get Betty out of here. I'll take care of Eiling. Dr. Wells said as Sisko went to prep the truck and Naruto left to lock down the pipeline while Barry helped Caitlin with Betty. They left via a secret entrance and took the STAR Labs truck to the same place they first tested Barry's speed while drive. Wells dealt with Eiling. Dr. Wells went to the main lobby of STAR Labs to meet General Eiling and saw him there with a squad of armed soldiers. Harrison Wells. How the mighty have fallen. General Eiling said in a smug tone as Dr. Wells kept a calm demeanor. General. Dr. Wells said as the squad of soldiers walked down the corridor and began searching the building. Star Labs. Oh, this place used to be so important. Tell me, what does one do after such a spectacular public failure? General Eiling asked. One adapts, one evolves. One takes a step back to prioritize one's focus and become intent on reversing one's fortune. Dr. Wells said as Eiling smirked. Always the idealist. Eiling commented. A trait I picked up from some very good friends. Dr. Wells said as he and Eiling heard footsteps coming up and saw Naruto walk in. Doctor. Wells, I just wanted to see what was keeping you. But when I saw the soldiers pass me, I should have figured. Naruto said as he clenched his fist, when Doctor. Wells slightly shook his head no, preventing Naruto from doing anything stupid. It's fine, Naruto. Just greeting our unwelcome guest. Doctor. Wells said as Naruto walked to Doctor. Wells sighed. Guess it's too late to ask if you have a warrant to be on private property. Naruto asked as Eiling chuckled and looked at the two men who stood by the elevator. Do you think we need one? Eiling said with a chuckle as he looked Naruto up and down. Naruto Namakaze, 
son of two of this country's greatest scientists. Where else would I expect to see you? Naruto raised an eyebrow and was surprised Eiling knew who he was. Oh, don't act so surprised. I did plenty of my own research before I came to Star Labs all those years ago. Your parents were some of this country's best and brightest minds. We could have accomplished a lot together, but they decided against it. My parents worked with Dr. Wells because they shared his vision. And they were a family. Naruto said as Eiling chuckled. Loyalty, an admirable quality, one I see you share. Otherwise you wouldn't be beside a failed scientist. You could have made a big difference if you joined the military and put that mind of yours to work on saving this country. Eiling said. I prefer to make a difference in helping the country advance forward, not by taking lives. Naruto replied. I see you're following your parents' ideals and look where that led. Eiling said as Dr. Wells noticed Naruto getting angrier so he decided to intervene before Naruto did something stupid. What do you want, Wade? Dr. Wells asked. Where's my assist? Eiling asked as Dr. Wells shrugged. I have no idea what you're talking about. Dr. Wells replied. We tracked her here, Harrison. Turn her over before you see the rest of your precious palace crumble. Eiling threatened him. Wade, Wade, Wade. Dr. Wells said as he shook his head. Eiling then motioned his men to move forward as he passed drive. Wells, we could have changed the world, you and I. But I guess you're happy where you are. Eiling said as he passed drive. Wells and Naruto. Naruto clenched his fist in anger and Dr. Wells could see small bolts of lightning generate so he pat Naruto on the shoulder to calm him down. God, I wanted to punch him after the way he spoke about my parents. Naruto said as Dr. Wells nodded. I know and a part of me wanted you to but General Eiling is well protected. Even with your powers, there are still enemies you can't fight. Dr. Wells said as Naruto calmed down and nodded. Any idea on how to get Eiling out of Central City without giving up Betty? Naruto asked. I'm working on it. Dr. Wells said as they moved back to the lab. While Naruto and Dr. Wells put General Eiling on the wrong path, Barry, Sisko and Caitlin studied Betty and Barry learned that Iris put her name on her blog about the streak, putting her in danger. He had tried talking her out of doing this before but that only spurred her to take this blog seriously. Now, Barry needed a new strategy to deal with Iris, and he had an idea. Iris was at jitters, working her late shift as she cleaned up before she left. She grabbed some dirty plates and put them on the counter when she heard knocking at the front door. Sorry, we're closed. She heard a whoosh of air and turned to see a man in a red suit standing in the coffee shop and knew it was the one of the streaks. Oh my god, it's you. She said. Iris West, I hear you've been writing about me. The Flash said in a distorted voice. You are real. I can't believe it. I should, um, let me just clean up. Whoosh Iris was cut off as the Flash whooshed around the room in a blur of yellow lightning and cleaned up the dirty plates and did her job in a manner of seconds. Meet me on the roof. I'll give you a head start. The flash said as she left for the roof. Iris walked through the door to the roof and turned to see the streak sitting on the roof ledge. I need you to stop writing about me. The flash said. There are a lot of people who need someone like you right now, to know that you're out there. You and your sidekick I saw the other night. Iris said as the mention of the sidekick made Barry chuckle because Naruto hated being called a sidekick. I have so many questions. Where are you from? The flash then sped behind her. I can't say. He replied. Who are you? She asked. I can't tell you that either. He replied as he sped to another part of the roof. What about what you can do? She asked as he didn't answer. You're a terrible interview. He then sped to her side. There's more to this than you can understand. Just trust me, please. I need you to stop. Can you stop? Running into buildings and rescuing people without them even knowing you're there? Iris asked. I don't do this for the glory. He replied. So, why do you? She asked as he sped behind her. Look, I have this friend, and he had something terrible happen to him when he was a kid. And his whole life, he's been telling stories about this impossible thing. And people laughed at him, and shrinks analyzed him. 
and he's been searching for an explanation ever since. But now suddenly it's like he's lost his faith. But you, you are proof that he wasn't crazy. Help me save my friend. She turned to him as the flash began vibrating his face so she couldn't recognize him and all she saw was a blur. He's a lucky guy, he said before he sped away. Line break xxxxxx. Barry thought about what Iris told him that night and went to Star Labs the next morning to see how Betty was doing. He walked into the cortex to see Drive, Wells, Caitlin, and Cisco with Betty in the med bay. Hey, what's going on? He asked, sensing the bad vibe with the group. Did Eiling find you? No, Caitlin was about to give me the not so good news. Betty said, the shrapnel in your body has merged with you on a cellular level. Caitlin said as Betty felt like her world was crashing down. The technology required to unsplice your DNA, it hasn't been invented yet. Doctor, Wells said as Betty tried to hold back tears. Betty, Barry said, it's okay. Roger that. I, I just need a minute. I'm pretty sure I can cry without making stuff blow up. She said as she left the pipeline to get some air. Everyone felt horrible for Betty as they couldn't do anything to help her. Now what? Cisco asked. I got an idea. They heard as they saw Naruto walk into the cortex. Naruto, I know how much you want to help her but there isn't anything we can do at the moment to get rid of her powers. Doctor, Wells told him. I know, but what about a way of suppressing them until we can do something? Naruto told him. How could we do that? Caitlin asked as he showed them some sketches and basic elemental and energy calculations. We develop something to suppress her powers. We have all the scans and data on her and now we can develop a set of power dampening cuffs or bracelet to suppress her powers so she's not a ticking time bomb. Naruto said as they looked over the design and calculations and it was possible if they ran enough tests. This could work, Cisco said as Dr. Wells sighed and rubbed his forehead. Dr. Wells, please, we have nothing to lose. Naruto said as Dr. Wells reluctantly nodded. But it's only a temporary solution. Betty won't be safe if she leaves Star Labs. Caitlin said. So, she joins us. Becomes a part of the team. Barry replied. Barry, you and Naruto have an amazing ability to help people. She makes things explode. Caitlin said to him. She's the first metahuman not hell-bent on destroying the city. Barry said. She's too dangerous. Doctor. Wells replied. If we can make the power dampening device she won't be a danger. We're not throwing her in the pipeline. Naruto said. I'm not suggesting she go in and even if we could develop the power dampening cuffs, it would only be a temporary solution. But were she to remain at Star Labs, it would put all of us at risk. Doctor. Wells said. From who, Eiling? Barry asked. Eiling is a dangerous man, Barry. We do not want him as an enemy. Doctor, Wells said. Well, we can't let Eiling take her. If he gets his hands on her, then we're just leaving her to get turned into a lab rat. Naruto said. And what alternative is there? Doctor, Wells asked. Maybe we can set her up with a new identity. Felicity can probably do that. It'll keep her safe and we can throw Eiling off her trail and get him out of Central City. The longer he stays, the more likely he'll find out about Barry and me. And I for one, don't want to be next on his little witch hunt. Naruto said as everyone nodded. Time will tell, Naruto. For now, let's see if we can work on those dampening cuffs you talked about. Doctor, well said as they got to work. They spent the entire day working on the power dampening cuffs for Betty and with her body scans, there was a possibility it would work. It would just take time. Barry left around 6 p.m. to head back to the CCPD while Naruto worked with Caitlin and Sisko. With his powers, Naruto managed to speed read to get to Sisko's level so he wasn't slowing him down. After a 10-minute speed reading session on everything in Star Labs, Naruto probably knew just as much as Sisko did. Probably not as much but enough so that he could help. Around 11 p.m., Sisko went home to get some sleep and he'd be back first thing in the morning to get back to work. Naruto stayed behind a little longer to work on the energy issue of the cuffs. 
The cups would emit a low-level energy wave that would negate her body's ability to use the large amount of nitrogen in her body and convert it to nitrate. Most likely when she touches something, the nitrate oxidizes rapidly in the object leading to a rapid oxidation of carbon compounds which releases large volumes of gases. Like gunpowder. Now the energy wave would prevent the oxidation process but the issue was a power source for the cups. Maybe he could use a charging system to power the cups, but it'd have to be a serious battery for it to work. Naruto grabbed some schematic papers and was walking around Star Labs to find Drive. Wells and get some help before he went home to get some sleep. He was looking for Dr. Wells and didn't see him in his office so he figured he was in the cortex. If he wasn't, he most likely went home but it didn't hurt to check. Naruto was walking to the cortex when he heard talking and recognized the voices as Betty and Dr. Wells. Cisco. Betty called out as she looked at the scans of her body and turned to see Drive. Wells. He went home. I think our young Cisco is developing a bit of a crush on you. Dr. Wells said as he rolled over to her. Naruto was listening and decided not to interrupt until Drive. Wells left because he didn't want to interrupt an important or sagely conversation. Not sure I'm prize-winning date material anymore. Betty replied. Change is hard. The same accident that changed you put me in this chair. Doctor. Wells told her. Sorry, I didn't know. She said. I don't share that story with you to garner sympathy. I tell it to you to illustrate a larger point. Doctor. Wells said. And what point is that? Betty asked. That I would do anything, to get back what I lost. As would you, Dr. Wells said in a very serious tone. Naruto recognized this tone as the one that Dr. Wells used when he was 100% serious and it scared him sometimes because drive. Wells seemed to be a different person when he spoke like that. I would. I just don't know how. Betty replied. Naruto's determined to design a pair of power dampening cuffs so you're no longer a hazard to the people around you and I will work with him as long as I can but you know that it isn't a permanent solution. Dr. Wells said as he looked at her. You soldiers, you call yourselves sheepdogs. Am I right? Happy and normal until someone attacks our flock. Betty said. Every good person who was changed that night, people like you, people like Naruto, Barry Allen, those people are your flock now, Betty. And General Eiling will never stop attacking that flock. And he always gets his target. Dr. Wells said. Unless you stop him. You know your duty, Sergeant. Kill Eiling. One last mission, and then you go home. Naruto couldn't believe what he was hearing, drive. Wells just told Betty that she should kill Eiling. He could understand why that would be necessary but that was plan Z, ultimate last choice if there was no other plan. Naruto heard Betty coming so he decided to call it a night and left. Naruto went home to get some sleep and get what he heard out of his head. He woke up the next morning, finished his homework in 5 minutes and did some housework for Tsunade before going back to Star Labs. He walked into the cortex to see Caitlin comforting Sisko. What happened? Naruto asked. Betty. She left. Caitlin said. Left. Where did she go? Naruto asked as Dr. Wells wheeled in. She didn't say. Dr. Wells replied as Naruto looked at him. I think I got an idea of where she is. Sisko, tap back into the military feed. If Betty is out there, Eiling is probably right on her tail. Naruto said as Sisko got to work. It took him a little longer than normal because he had to make sure the military couldn't backtrace his hack but he did it. I tapped into the military's radio feed. Looks like they've gone to the waterfront after Eiling got a call from Betty. She's turning herself in. Sisko said as Naruto looked at the screen. No, she's not. She's doing something else. Naruto said as he grabbed his suit and ran to the waterfront as Dr. Wells looked at Naruto's lightning trail as he left. Please let him get there in time. Sisko said. Naruto ran through the city and to the waterfront and saw small smoke stacks from explosions and several military vehicles. He could see a dozen soldiers on the ground, unconscious and Betty walking towards someone with her hand out so he quickly stopped in front of her in a whoosh of air. What are you doing here? Betty asked. Stopping you. There's a difference between fighting a war and cold-blooded murder. 
Even if it's Isling, don't let him make you into a monster. Naruto said as he heard a gunshot and Betty hit the ground. Naruto's eyes filled with rage as lightning flashed in them as he quickly sped to Isling and sucker punched him across the face and knocked him out cold. He then knelt to Betty and took off his mask. I'm sorry, I didn't see the gun. Naruto tried to stop the bleeding as Betty smiled at him. Don't be. It's not your fault. I'm glad you stopped me. Betty said as she smiled at him. Hang on. I'll get you to Star Labs and Caitlin will fix you up. Naruto said as Betty grabbed his hands. Naruto. Doctor. Wells. He. He. Betty struggled to say as Naruto knew. I know. I know. Naruto said as he nodded and Dr. Wells who was listening in on the conversation narrowed his eyebrows. Betty smiled at Naruto as she closed her eyes and her head fell to the side. Naruto exhaled in sadness at her death when he noticed her glowing. Guys, we got a problem. Is Betty okay? Sisko asked. No, Eiling killed her. She's glowing. I think she's gonna detonate. Naruto said. Oh, my god. A mass that size, the explosion would be, devastating. Dr. Wells said, finishing Caitlin's sentence. Naruto, you have to get her away from the city. Caitlin told him. I don't think that'll work. I won't get her out of the city in time. Naruto said as he looked at the road leading out of the city when he looked at the waterfront. I got an idea. Can I run on water? I built up enough speed to run up a building. How fast do I need to go to run on water? Uh, assuming your weight, 450 pounds of force per step for vertical suspension. Accounting for fluid drag, approximately 700 miles an hour. Dr. Wells said, finishing Cisco's calculation. Two. But that's not it. When you get Betty away from the city, you have to outrun the blast, or you'll die too. Cisco told him as Naruto nodded. Naruto took a breath, put his mask on and took Betty into his arms. He then ran forward with his lightning trail right behind him as he was actually running on water, reaching 700 miles per hour, and kicking up a wave of water as he ran. Cisco, Caitlin, and Dr. Wells were watching the monitor and tracking Naruto's suit's tracker as he was running out to the ocean. Naruto made it a mile offshore and dropped Bet's body in the water and ran as fast as he could back to the city. When he got a quarter mile away from dropping off Betty, a huge underwater explosion went off that created a water cloud at least 500 feet high. With the explosion, a huge tidal wave of water spread out and rushed in all directions as Naruto raced back to ground as fast as he could. Naruto looked back and saw the tidal wave getting closer so he pushed himself as hard as he could and felt himself tapping into the same energy he felt before on the cosmic treadmill when he got that wave of visions. Ra h h h h h h h h Naruto shouted as he zoomed forward like a rocket, creating a loud sonic boom, and tumbled onto the ground safely making it to shore. Naruto took off his mask as he was breathing heavy and looked out to the water and saw the explosion dispersed and the tidal wave had turned into a small ripple of water as it got to the city. Naruto. Naruto, are you okay? Caitlin asked as Naruto touched his comms. I'm fine. I'm coming home. Naruto said as he ran back to Star Labs. Line break xxxxxx. Naruto and the group were in the cortex watching a news report on the explosion in the river and General Eiling was being interviewed but he immediately had a cover-up. Nothing out of the ordinary occurred. The military was simply conducting an underwater weapons test. There is no need for panic or alarm. Central City is safe, I guarantee you. Eiling said to the camera as everyone watched the screen. He murdered Betty right in front of me and there's nothing I can do to stop him. Naruto said in disdain and anger as Caitlin rubbed his shoulder and Barry pat him on the back. Powerful men have a way of avoiding consequences. Dr. Wells said. Bet's death won't be in vain. Eiling will get what's coming to him eventually. Naruto said with determination as he turned around and Caitlin looked at him. Are you okay? Caitlin asked as Naruto smiled. I'm fine. I'll see you guys later. Naruto said as he grabbed his jacket and walked out of the cortex as doctor. Wells looked at him. Naruto put on his jacket and fixed his collar as he got to the elevator. I heard what you said to Betty. Everything. Naruto heard as he turned to see drive. Wells. 
I figured you were listening in. Naruto said as he zipped up his jacket. You sent her on a kill mission. I only told Betty the truth, you know that Naruto. I thought I saw a way to keep you safe from Eiling. Doctor. Wells said as Naruto looked at him. Keep me safe. You sent her to kill him. Naruto said. You said it yourself. Eiling was a danger to you, Mr. Allen. Betty and every other poor person who was changed the night the accelerator exploded. Eiling is a tactical genius and when he sets his sight on a target nothing short of a godly intervention will stop him. It was only a matter of time before he discovered you and Mr. Allen and once that happened, he will become obsessed in catching you. Dr. Wells said. Then we would do something else. Adapt and find a way to stop him, not kill someone in cold blood. Naruto replied as Dr. Wells smirked. And I admired your attitude and your beliefs Naruto but you should remember what your parents and I told you about the world when you decided to go to college to pursue your degree in physics. Dr. Wells said as Naruto nodded. I know. Just because we can change the world for the better doesn't mean people change. You said that several times. Naruto replied. And it's one lesson that you must take to heart. I know the future has big plans for you, both as a scientist and as impulse but that means there will be people at every corner who will try and break you down or take advantage of you. Look at the people already in the world. Simon Stagg, General Eiling, Drive. Thaddeus Savannah. The list can go on and on and these people, once they get a glimpse at your potential they will be there to take you apart until there is nothing left. Dr. Wells warned him. You're being cynical. Naruto told him. I'm being realistic. You know me, Naruto, I've always been a realist and so were your parents. They did a lot to change the world but they understand above all that some people don't change. Dr. Wells said. I get that. But going after Eiling in cold blood. And there's the fact that you kept it from the rest of us. Naruto said. Eiling has enough innocent blood on his hands that it would have been what he deserved. And I kept this from you and the others because I didn't want you all to bear the burden of what would happen should we succeed. Betty was a soldier who has seen combat and was more suited for the task. Dr. Wells said as Naruto began to calm down and understood drive. Wells thinking. You know I would never do something like this unless it was to keep you safe. Above everything else, my main goal is to protect you and everyone here. I know. Drive. Wells. I know. It's just that, I have these amazing powers to help people and in that moment, size I never felt more powerless. Naruto said as Dr. Wells moved to Naruto's side. I understand. When I see you run out to protect the city, I feel that it should be me bearing the burden of what you do but instead I'm confined to this chair. Beth's death is my burden to bear, but Eiling is the one who pulled the trigger, you tried to save her. Dr. Wells said as Naruto nodded. Don't let her death burden you. Honor Bet's memory by making sure that nothing like this can happen again. You're already on your way there. What do you mean? Naruto asked as Dr. Wells handed him a data pad. Today was the fastest you've ever run. You achieved Mach 1. Dr. Wells said as Naruto looked and saw the data from his suit recorded his speed today at 334 meters per second or 767 miles per hour. I broke the sound barrier. Naruto said in amazement. I didn't think that was possible. It is. You achieved something amazing today, Naruto and in only a few months after first getting your powers. Dr. Wells said as Naruto nodded. And I'll keep pushing myself, drive. Wells. I'll honor Bet's death, and make you proud. Naruto said as Dr. Wells smiled. And my first step in that is getting some sleep. I'll see you tomorrow. Naruto left Star Labs and the others followed soon as Dr. Wells remained in the cortex for a while longer to look at the scans from Bet's body and on Naruto's recent accomplishment. He heard one of the monitors beep and saw video footage from the elevators, showing General Eiling coming to see him. Dr. Wells waited in the elevator lobby as Eiling walked out of the elevator. What do you want, Wade? Dr. Wells asked. I was wrong about you, Harrison. You're still one step ahead. Impressive for a man without the use of his legs. Eiling said. I'm afraid I don't know what you're talking about, Wade. Doctor. 
Wells told him. A girl who can transform ordinary objects into explosive with the touch of her hand. Today I saw a man who can move faster than the blink of an eye. Extraordinary. The night your particle accelerator died was the night the impossible was born. I think we should start working together again, Harrison. Eiling said as Dr. Wells didn't look pleased. Failing that, I'll take that Naruto kid instead. He's bright enough to help me and I'm sure I can make him more compliable than his parents. I think you should leave now, General. Dr. Wells warned him. You know I can have a squadron of soldiers here in minutes to take you and him by force, if necessary. Eiling threatened him. I can have an army of press here, like that. Dr. Wells said as he snapped his fingers. Believe me, General, I'd be more than happy to testify to your involvement in activities that were less than humane. Threaten me or Naruto Namikaze ever again, and I will end you, General. And I'm not talking about your career. Eiling glared as he pressed the elevator button. You know, I figured out your little secret wells. Won't be long before the public does as well. He said as he left.